So we only have four right now. Orlando, do me a favor. Could you ask Councilwoman Davila to come in? And where's uh, Councilwoman Ka Oh. I miss you already. I'm telling you. Yeah, but you have a Councilwoman Davila right there. Council members, we need five. I'm ready when you're ready. Good evening, everyone. Good On behalf evening. of the Patterson Municipal Council, I welcome you to the regular meeting of the Municipal Council. The meeting is now called to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call for Municipal Council regular meeting June 22nd, 2021 at 7 p.m. Councilman Abdelaziz, Councilwoman Cotton, yes. Councilwoman Davila. Present. Councilman Jackson, Councilman Kalik, Councilman Mendez. Good evening, Patterson, President, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilman Mims. I'm here, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilman Velez. Welcome, everyone. My president is here. Councilman Velez, yes. Thank you. Mr. President. Here. Thank you. Mr. President and honorable council member, this evening we have to render the prayer the honorable Dr. Lilisa Mims, Councilman of the Fourth, I'm sorry, <laughs> Councilman at large, not Councilman Cotton, sorry. That's and it. That's we it. have two students from JFK Educational Complex School. She's a graduate um, for um, 2021. And school number 27, Samaya Gills. And these two students will lead us in the flag salute. So at this time, everyone, please rise for the prayer by Dr. Lelisa Mims. Thank you. Good evening. Madam Clerk, I'm honored to say 4-4 four, four because I am born and raised in a 4, so it, it, it's fine. Um, today is an amazing day. We have to declare and decree things into the atmosphere, and those things will be established. So you have to learn how to command your morning. You have to command your day. You have to command your month and command your year. And even though things look contrary, the winds may blow, the storms may rage, it may seem crazy, you have to learn to dictate to your life that everything surrounding you and your community and your family is going to be awesome. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you because this is the day that you have made, and so we rejoice and we are glad in it. God, we thank you that you created the heavens and the earth. You created us out of the dust of the ground, and you blew into us the breath of life, the ruach, the wind of God. And because of that, we were born with purpose. We were shaped. We were formed to give forth you glory and to give forth honor. And so, God, every day that we rise up, we open up our eyes, we open up our mouth, and we give you thanks. Every day that we're able to get up out of our bed and to move our limbs and to move our hands and our feet, we're able to shout and to give you thanks. It is a day of thanksgiving. We're grateful for this meeting on tonight. We're looking forward to all of the magnificent things that are to come. I have such an excitement in my spirit because I believe that great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
We will now have a moment of silence for our troops and those who have lost loved ones. Thank you. You may be seated. Madam Clerk, will you please uh, read the statement of compliance? Yes, Mr. President. Statement of compliance with the Open Public Meetings Law 2020 to 2021, meeting date June 22, 2021, time 7 p.m. Adequate notice of this meeting was compiled and disseminated in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Law in the following manner. One, the annual notice of regular meetings and workshop sessions of the Municipal Council was compiled for the year 2020 to 2021 on or about July 1, 2020. Two, a schedule of the regular meetings and workshop sessions of the Municipal Council for the year 2020 to 2021 was duly transmitted on or about July 1, 2020 to the North Jersey Herald News, The Record, The Arabic Voice, Italian Voice, Jose County Pulse, Dominicana News, Cuscator International, El Especial, pa The Patterson Press, The City Post News, and TAP into Patterson, in addition to any other publication duly requesting such notices. Three, the schedule of the regular meetings and workshop sessions of the Municipal Council for the year 2020 to 2021 was prominently posted in the lobby of City Hall first floor in the place reserved for the announcements of this type. Four, the schedule of the regular meetings and workshop sessions of the Municipal Council for the year 2020 to 2021 was duly filed with the Municipal Clerk. Five, a copy of the schedule of regular meetings of the Municipal Council was mailed to any person who requested and it paid the fee authorized by the Open Public Records Act. Mr. President. Yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You're welcome, sir. Before we continue, um, Councilwoman Cotton asked me uh, five minutes to do a presentation. So Councilwoman Cotton, you have the floor? Council President, I just want to say good evening to everyone. Uh, every opportunity that I get, I believe that we need to showcase our children uh, in our city. We got 30,000 children in our school system. And you know, it makes them feel good when, when we, we bring them into this hall, because they need to feel part of this hall, this city council. And so I just want to bring up the two ladies that I had to do my flag salute. They are members of my church, New Amy Zion Church. My pastor is Reverend Maddox. And I just want to say to Shemaya and to Amaya, would you please come up? I have some citation for you. And let me tell you something. I speak to parents all the time, and I see parents save their children's citations or whatever they get from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. And they show it to them on all the accomplishments that they've, they've done throughout the years of being here. And I say this is absolutely wonderful. I have a citation for you from the mayor's office, from our city council members here, all of them, and also from myself as councilwoman here in the fourth ward. So I want to present this to you. Amaya is graduating from John F. Kennedy High School, uh, and uh, Amaya is in school 27. Uh, I forgot what grade. Fourth grade. So let's give our young people a hand. Let's showcase them as much as we can. And I thank you for coming out tonight to doing this for me. So these are the citations for you. Um, you can sit there, don't leave yet, then one side. I also, I just want to say real fast, oh, come here, sweetie. Yeah, just, he wants to open up, my councilman, Velez. He's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, come on, we're gonna show it. Yeah, th that's what she said too, right? Okay, yeah, okay, go, go, go. And I just want to say, um, I had a young lady that I wanted to do the prayer. She graduated from college. And I want us all to say a special prayer for her. Her mom died last night, and that's why she could not come today. She was looking so forward to saying the prayer before the city council, before 25,000 people watching us every, every week. And so her name is Miracle. And to me, that's a special name, Miracle. Uh, Duncan, and I just want to say, please, 
Everyone watching, you all council people, everyone in the audience, our administration, please keep this young lady in your prayers. Her mom passed last night. She was looking so forward of being here with us today, but she's not able to. And I just want to say that, Miracle Duncan, my condolences to you and the family, and I will be praying for you. Thank you. Council President, thank you for making, letting me make this um, accommodation to our young people, to my council members, thank you. Um, for letting me stand here, because it's so important that we recognize our clerk, our, our, our secretaries, our chief of staff, our administration. Please, we always must remember our young people, no matter what. And let me tell you something, they don't realize it, but our young people are watching everything from Facebook to live TV to everything. We need to be careful what we do and what we say, because they're looking at us every single day. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, do we have a motion for payment of bills? Yes, Council President. There are two payment of bills on tonight. The first payment of bills is in the amount of two million nine hundred and eighty-three thousand six hundred and thirty-four dollars and forty-one cents. There are payments to uh, waste management that are included. I'll make the motion on tonight. Do we have a second? Moved by Councilwoman Mims, second by Councilman of the Lassies. Roll call, Madam Clerk, the payment of bills. Yes, Mr. President. Payment of bills, uh, regular payment of bills in the amount of $2,983,634.41. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is six in favor, three absent. Payment of bills is hereby adopted. The second payment of bills I would like to make the motion is $49,020.36. Um, the invoices and the receipts are attached. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman. Um, Mo uh, moved by Councilman Mims, second by Councilman Velez. Discussion, Councilman Velez? Uh, through the chair, um, Madam uh, Council President, through the chair. Um, BA, uh, can you tell us what is left in this grant? Are we little by little wasting it? How much is left? Uh, you mean in the, the COVID care salary, Councilman? Correct. Um, we are just submitting for reimbursement probably the last uh, million and a half. And that's through, we have until the end of July for those reimbursement submissions. So, so these are, you, I think we'll probably see a few more expenses um, on the July 1st bills list, which are just some of our technology improvements that we received. Once we receive um, the, the purchases, then we're able to process the bills. So that those are the last ones that we will be connected to this grant. So in other words, we have one million left which a lot of that is, is the still payroll submissions for some COVID backfill overtime, that type of thing. And when you talk about COVID overtime, that's directly to who? A lot of it is related to um, public safety, health and human services. We still have people out doing testing services. Um, so it, it's, it's a variety of employees. So, and, and, and President. yeah, so uh, just, just the last question. Uh, so, um, when you say public safety, it does involve those individuals that um, communication room, those that was working and was obligated to work in a pandemic situation, and they was not included in that payment. So where, how how they call that? Um, it's come kind of like refresh me the word in that time. The um, Right, that's, that's not what we're referring to here, that this okay. is just paying overtime, especially if there are firefighters out with COVID that we have to backfill to have a minimum staffing level. That's the type of overtime that we're, we're allowed to submit for this grant. Right. Thank you, Council President. Council President. Council Davila. Uh, Madam VA, if I can just explain to me what this purchase of new mattresses are for sure. This how many is of them? I see here 
quantity one at 12,500 and then I proceed and I see 50 at 250. So if you can explain that. Correct, yes, it actually is the 50 mattresses. This is for um, some of the firehouses. Part of um, the challenge with, with the mattresses that were there was that the extensive cleaning that has been going on all throughout the pandemic, it has deteriorated the mattresses. So we um, submitted this for as one of the items, if we could replace, could we use CARES dollars to replace it? We got approval and they moved forward with it. And if, if these mattresses for the ambulances? Or? No, for the firehouses themselves. For the act. Yep. Okay. Okay, thank you. What kind of mattress? Madam, um, Council President? Oh. Council President? Councilman of the I just, I just heard, so one mattress is 12,000. No, I know, it said one, 12, and then I looked at the other page, and then it says 50 at yes. 250. Exactly, they're $250, there were 50 purchased. So it's 50 mattresses. Correct. Okay, I just Twin mattresses. Twin. Twin. I just, just yep. want the record to reflect, thank you. Yep. Council President. Councilman Velez. Is that, you know, uh, are these mattresses are twin, queens, or what? They just said twin. twin. But you didn't say twin? twin? I said uh -huh. twin. Okay. Mm -hmm. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call for payment of bills for COVID-19, the amount of $49,020.36. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mims? Invoices and everything is attached, and when we purchase things, we have to pay our bills. My vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Velez? Do notice, my vote is yes. Mr. President? No. The vote is five in favor, one against, three absent. Payment of bills for COVID-19 is hereby adopted. Madam Clerk, can we do 29 and then 30? 29 and 30. Next items on the agenda is a non-consent items. Item number 29 reads, resolution authorizing an award it. of contract to Mendel lead inspectors for consultants slash evaluation for lead inspection services, the Department of Health and Human Services, RFP number 2021-35.1, Health and Human Services, resolution 21349. Council President. So moved. Discussion. Councilman Moved by. Move by Councilman Mims, second by Councilman Velez. Ab Councilman Velez's uh, discussion. discussion. Councilman Davila. So, Council President, I'm just looking at my agenda items and the. Um, I don't have item 39. Where is it? We're doing 29. I thought you two said nine. 39. 29. Oh, okay, 29. Councilman Velez, you had a so, question? So, yeah, Council President, through the chair. Uh, so in other words, we outsourcing the responsibility, our inspectors in the uh, Board of Health to do the late inspection now? Madam B.A. Council President, Councilman, uh, no, this is a very specific, um, connected to a grant, but I, I will have um, one of our uh, team leaders on this grant actually has been the, sort of the program manager of it. If she gets, Jean, if you wanna step forward. Um, if you have any questions, she can answer them more particularly. This is the federal grant that the city won. Um, you know, really exciting opportunity to provide not just inspections, but some oversight. There are two. Um, there's kind of consultant services, and then there's contractors. And she's work, she worked for the city? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can, you, can you tell us if this is your role also at the same time? Um, my name is Jean Mugulusi. I work for the Patterson Health Department. Um, I'm the industrial hygienist, but now I'm going to be taking on the role as program manager for the HUD grant. So, so in other words, this company, are, are you authorized to speak on behalf of the department? Yes, because it's my grant. I applied for it. Uh, I did everything. I it. just want to make sure. That's right. Yes. So, so, I, I, I don't know. I never, I never so, saw her so, coming in. So, so yeah. councilman. Okay. Council yeah. I applied so, for it on no, behalf of the Hold on, hold on, point of order. So, hey, man, so, for, this is the first so time. So, Councilman, Councilman. Hold on, hold on. If the BA, Councilman, just give me a minute. If the BA called her up 
to answer the questions. That means she's authorized. No, it's not that. It's the first time that I see her. So, so let's welcome her. Welcome. So, counsel, well, Thank okay. you. So All right, welcome. let's continue I've the meeting, been, please. So, so I've welcome. I've been an employee for the city of Patterson for 17 years. So. I, and I, and I, can, can you let welcome. me speak, Mitch, Councilwoman Mintz? And we could praise her work. I'm and not I know she does. She does a great work, and I see her out there. My question was so simple. So you run this this program, correct? Yes. Okay, and that's what I want to. I just want to make sure that any contract that comes here, okay, and, and we honoring this contract to other third party, they're not taking yes. your rice and beans no. from your table, from your responsibility, no. and stepping on your leadership no. that you've been doing in the city of Patterson. So no. simple, just protecting no. your work. The requirements of the grant is we have to have third party contractors do the work. Thank you. Yes. Council President. Keep, keep on the great job. Con Councilman Thank Mendes. Th thank you, thank you, and welcome to the chamber. I, I, had, a, I had a question, and on the on the body of the resolution, I see that the, the grant is for not to exceed ninety thousand dollars. The question that I have for you is that what what is the amount of employees? How are we going to be as, uh, using those ninety thousand um, dollars, and the, the amount to, of the staff that is going to be covered with those ninety thousand dollars? So the, it's not nine thousand; it's actually thirteen thousand for each unit. Mm -hmm. And it will include the, the inspection, the abatement. Mm -hmm. if, re, if we have to relocate the residents to some uh, a place where the work is being done, that will all fall within the 30, 13,000. Okay, but on the, on, the, on, the, on the item 29, where they're saying um, now um, there are four bid results, the amount is saying not to exceed $90,000 for a period of 24 months. For the day of the notice of the process, that's the reason. That's what I'm. That's what I'm looking at down here, and and the reason why I'm asking this question is because the next question is from Madam B. A. Madam B. A. Is that this service is going to be provided also to the uh, the housing department, the housing authority, when they have to do those inspections in those apartments? Is that related or not? It, or it's a separate entity. This is separate, this right? This is separate. Mm -hmm. Understood. All yeah. right. Yes. Yeah, so that that first part was just about the consultant. <coughs> yeah. Overseeing. Yeah. But the ninety thousand dollars, the last we asked. Can you elaborate a little bit more yes. on that? Yes. So that if you want to speak about um, Mandel lead inspectors as the yes. consultant so evaluator. Yes. So altogether, we're supposed to do at least ninety-four units. We're anticipating that we'll have more than ninety-four, but we're supposed to do at least ninety-four units at a rate of. Um, uh, 600, I think 694 per unit. So I think that's the 9,000 amount. That's a $9,000 amount. Correct. Understood. Thank you so very much. And Jean, can in a little bit, can you explain um, in particular what the consultant work in terms of overseeing and evaluating the work of, of the contractor? Can you explain that a little bit? So, so once, once, we, once we identify the unit, the consultant will go in, do the lead inspection, and once the lead inspection has been done, they'll return their paperwork over to us, and then we'll reach out to the abatement contractors who will, we have two abatement contractors who bid on the job, and then they'll go in and do the abatement. So in that process, the consultant will follow up on, on the abatement to make sure that things are being done the, as per hard guidelines, and then when, once that's done, we go back in and certify the job and then we let the residents so. come back in. Thank you very much. So, um, Madam Clerk, can you do a roll call? Yes, Mr. President. 29. Roll call in item number 29 for approval. Councilman Abdel Yes. Yes. Councilwoman Hahn? Yes. Councilwoman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Abstain. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mim. First of all, let me commend you on being an employee of this city for 17 years, identifying that there was a need in your department, finding a grant, writing the grant, and then standing to defend the grant that you wrote to help the city of Patterson. I commend you, kudos to you. 17 years in the city is greatly to be appreciated. My vote is yes. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Villas. We agree. <laughs> Nothing wrong to agreeing in something good that comes to Patterson. What I want to make sure is that your job is stabilized and not taken to a third party. But no. it's a grant. It's a grant. Yes. Keep on doing a great job. Hopefully a lot of people from your department represent the same way that you do. Thank you. My word is yes. Mr. President. So 
After the pandemic, we started televising the workshop meetings, right? And this is the meeting that we normally have the lengthy discussions on items before it gets moved for a vote, which we're doing today. Last meeting, this, this item, and again, it's nothing wrong with asking questions on the regular meeting also, like you know today's meeting. But it was interesting that the last workshop, there was not many discussion. And this item was on the agenda, from my understanding, at the last workshop meeting. And there was no discussion on the item at all. So I just want to point that out that, you know, in the past, council members, uh, other council bodies had a tendency to ask a lot of questions during the regular meeting also, because that was the only meeting televised. But now all of the meetings are televised. So I just want to put that out there. Um, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you, Mr. President. The vote is seven in favor, one abstain, one absent. Item number 29 is hereby adopted. Number Could we do number 30, Madam Clerk? Yes, the next item is item number 30. Resolution authorizing the award of contract for lead abatement contractor, rebid number 21.23 for the health division of the health, Department of Health and Human Services, Health and Human Services, resolution 21.350. So moved. Move. Moved by Councilman Mim, second by Councilman Velez. Roll call, Madam Clerk. We'll call an item number 30, Councilman Abdelaziz. Yes. Councilwoman Khan? Yes. Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? Oh, uh, yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is eight in favor, one absent. Item number 30 is hereby adopted. Madam Clerk, can we do number 37? 37. Next item on non-consent agenda is item number 37. Item number 37 reads, resolution authorizing an award of contract to USA Architects, Planners and Interior Designers Limited for Architectural and Engineering Professional Services for the Danforth Memorial Library for the Department of Administration Library, RFP number 2022-03, Status Door Agency, Resolution 21357. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman Mims. Discussion. Moved by Councilman Velez, second by Councilman Mims. Councilman Davila, discussion. Yes. Um, Council President, um, as you are aware, you weren't here last week and neither was I. So I'd like to just quickly just ask a quick question since I read here that this is the recommendation of the director. Uh, was the DPW department involved in this process? So the director is here. Uh, from the library. I, I, I'm sorry? The director from the library is here. He can elaborate. Hello? Good morning. Good afternoon. No, I'm asking the question. I'm reading here that it says that it's your recommendation. I wanted to know who else was involved in the process okay. of this, um, in the bidding process. The uh, Harry's office was, it was involved in the RFP. We had about 40 um, um, firms pick up the, uh, the packet, seven, seven bought it. As far as the um, the, uh, <clears throat> the the uh, per the Department of Preservation, they actually did the uh, the scoring. Um, that they went to uh, the library board meeting, where the library board actually um, vetted all of the uh, seven and uh, took the recommendation um, of the first um, USA Architects. Okay, thank you, Council President. Uh, Council President. Council Member Just quick. When it's going to start, when it's going to finish, when it's going to look beautiful. Well, this is the, um, the actual um, scope of work for the, the construction to start. Um, so we're trying to get this, um, this construction started as soon as possible. Thank we, don't you, have, we don't have dates as, as, as of yet. Thank you. Uh, did the libraries operate in full, the people are visiting? Well, right now, we're, yeah, we are actually um, kicking off our, um, our opening um, next week. We have a summer reading kickoff um, at Oak Branches on Friday. Uh, next week we're going to do soft openings. July 6th we're going to be start, We're going to open to the general public. To the chair, make sure you invite all the council members because we get noticed late sometimes. Definitely. Thank so you. what's the best way of contacting email? Yes. All right. You have somebody tomorrow morning. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Um, I'm waiting for a text from the CFO. I don't see the attached uh, certification of funds on it. Um, 
I can send it. Actually, it's on the body. That, that's that's uh, correct. They changed the law a few years ago that you could actually certify it through the body. So I see the account number there. Uh, all right. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call on item number 37 for approval. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilwoman Khan? Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Valens? Director, thank you for your diligent work. My vote is yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is eight in favor, one absent. Item number 37 is hereby adopted. We do number 27, Madam Clerk. 27? Yes. Next item is item number 27. And item number 27 reads, resolution authorizing award of contract under competitive contracting to Foundation Risk Partners Corp doing business at Fairfield Insurance Agency Associates, Inc. for insurance broker services for the city of Palisman. RFP number 2022-02, finance resolution 21347. So move. Second. Moved by Councilman Velez, second by Councilman Mims. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Roll call on item number 27 for approval. Councilman Abdelaziz. Oh, he's not there, sorry. Councilwoman Khan? Yes. Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? My word is yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is seven in favor, two absent. Item number 27 is hereby adopted. Madam Clerk, let's do number 20. 20? Yes. Next item is item number 20. Resolution commemorating, commemorating the 48th pastoral anniversary of Bishop Dr. Mary Bradley, DD, sponsored by Councilman Dr. Lelisa Mims. City Council Resolution 21340. Second. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman Mims, second by Councilman Mendes. And Velez. And Velez. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Roll call item number 20 for approval. Council, Councilwoman Khan. Number 20. Um, thank you, Madam Clerk. I just want to say um, congratulations to Bishop Mary Bradley on her 48th pastoral anniversary. Um, I have known her for many, many years, so this I know that it's, it's not easy um, pastoring a church for that many years, but, but I see that there are many are, are, are doing it now. So with that being said, uh, it's an honor. And I'm happy to vote yes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Thank you, Madam Clerk. Just let me take this time to congratulate you know, the pastor on the 40th anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, my vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilman Mims? To Apostle Parsons, who reached out to me, one of my colleagues in the gospel, who reached out in, on behalf of Bishop Dr. Mary Bailey, um, who has been preaching. She is well-versed, very educated, as it relates to not just the gospel, but in pastoral leadership. My hats go off to her and the great work that she has done throughout the course of her life and throughout the years. My vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Velez? To the Bishop, uh, Dr. Mary Bailey, uh, you know, preaching, teaching, but the most important thing I know in the 48 years of ministry is praying. So when you're in that war room, keep on praying for us. My word is yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is seven in favor, two absent. Item number 20 is hereby adopted. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Can we do number 22? Next item is item number 22. Item number 22 reads, resolution to amend resolution number 2235, authorizing budget revision number five for the substantial amendment to the 2019-2020 one-year action plan for the CDBG COVID-19 CARES Act funding. Community development resolution 21342. So Move it. Second. Second. Moved by <laughs> Councilman Davila. And Cotton. And Councilman Davila Cotton. And Cotton. Mm -hmm. Second. Yes. Second by Councilman Mendes, Mims, and Velez. Do we have a discussion? I don't need no discussion. 
No discussion today? That's a good thing. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, roll call on item number 22 for approval. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilwoman Khan? Yes. Councilman Davila? Council President, to everyone, these items were discussed thoroughly in yeah. our uh, committee meeting, and I know they were also discussed in workshops, so my vote is yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Taking it easy, you directed today. Uh, but before my vote, I just want to say that it was a very, there was a very sensitive discussion during the workshop, and we definitely appreciate your leadership and, and, and you, you know, your responsibility, director. I just want to make a comment, you know, before my vote, and is that uh, what I mentioned before, we, we have to find a way to teach those new nonprofit, those new entities that are doing a great job in the city of Patterson, to be able to apply successfully for grants. Uh, a lot of them, they're doing a great work in the community but they need that little push uh, in terms of knowledge, in terms of how to apply and be successful. Uh, and I know that with your experience, you could definitely help uh, those entities with the education piece. And uh, I believe that, that definitely you could do it. But I'm, I'm gonna collect my body, yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? Great job. My vote is yes. Mr. President? Just encouraged to see that uh, at least for this time, uh, we're letting Ms. Barbara McLennan do her job. Uh, you know, once he gets to our desk or to our to the days here, uh, that means that he has been vetted. He has gone through the process required by HUD guidelines, and uh, all we could do is just ask questions that are relevant to the program. But we should not entertain as council members entertain discussion of how the funds were awarded. Um, and uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Just don't want the residents to think that I'm trying to prevent any discussions from the council. I was just encouraged to, to hear that uh, none of the council members had an issue uh, with the allocations. Uh, my vote is yes. I always gotta have that. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, council President? <laughs> council President? She got to call the vote. No, no, I just. She got to call the vote first. She got to call the roll. Oh, council I'm McCarty. sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Vote. The vote is eight in favor, one absent. Item number 22 is hereby adopted. Councilman Cotton, you want to add? Yeah, I was trying to figure out which council members have a conflict. It, it would be, I'm sorry. Councilman, Who? I can answer, Mr. President. Councilman Khalid. Who? Who was it? Councilman Khalid. Oh, Councilman Khalid. Okay. But since he's absent, I did not place it on okay. the record. I just have him as absent. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did speak with the director. Yeah, but I'm trying to. Are we taking the other two, Mr. President, 23 and 24? Yeah, let's do 23 and 24. Yes, sir. Next item is item number 23, resolution to amend resolution number 2572, authorizing budget revision number five to the home program fiscal year 2019 to 2020 for corrections to the home budget Community Development Resolution 21343. So, so moved. Moved by Councilman Velez, second by Councilman Davila. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Welcome to item number 23 for approval. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilwoman Khan? <coughs> it would be nice sometime if the person who chairs the committee can move it, but. <laughs> I agree with you, Councilwoman Cotton. You know, if you chair a committee, I don't. Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Davila? My vote is yes. <laughs> Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? Only one comment the pink and the max looks great. <laughs> my vote is yes. Thank you. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is eight in favor, one absent. Item number 23 is hereby adopted. Item number 24, Mr. President? Yes. Number 24, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Next item is item number 24, resolution to authorize the allocation of excess regional contribution agreement funds for the August election development project. Economic development resolution 21344. So moved. So move. Second. By Councilman. Moved by Council Mims Velez, second by Councilman Mendes. Uh, Director, do you mind? Um, I have a few questions. He was yeah. here last week. <laughs> no, 
so I was not present at the last meeting, uh, but I did have a question, and, 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 and I just want to make sure that this never happens again. This, this funding technically was not allocated, but the, the entity submitted an application to, to the state, basically including this funding in their capital stack. I just want to make it clear that none of the funding uh, could be, first of all, I question the process of how that entity was given these funds. That was one. Uh, nothing against the entity. I'm questioning the process, right? Let's make it clear. It's just the process of just saying, giving an, an entity funding without, you didn't give out the funding, but basically, I'm going to assume that the administration gave the word to this entity that they were going to get this funding. Is that correct? Go ahead. So the, the, oh, sorry. These are what are called regional contribution agreements that are part of affordable housing doctrine that goes back to Mount Laurel Doctrine, which um, about eight years ago, maybe more, was eliminated. So the Coalition on Affordable Housing was eradicated. So these funds are remaining funds that exist for Patterson to do affordable housing. And so they're basically discretionary funds that are tied to and have been presented to. So when we presented to the council in October of last year, the presentation that we gave, we noted these funds were part of the capital stack. So when we did the pilot that you approved as a council for those funds to HMFA, this was noted in that capital stack. It was also noted during the home fund review process that was tied in with CDA. So this has been kind it still, of consistent. It still doesn't, let me, let me interject. It still doesn't justify the process, right? You're doing a presentation and including in the capital stack, mm -hmm. this funding doesn't justify that or doesn't um, basically but yeah. it's, it's discretionary. Justify the process. It's, it's, it's the dis process. It's discretionary funds that are tied to the ability to create affordable housing. So, right. so, so as long as there's affordable housing that's being created. Direct, director, there's, there's no such thing in municipal, in municipal government. They might be discretionary, but it has to be approved by, the, by this council. That, correct. Right? And what I'm saying is, let's make sure because this is what happens. We question the process. You see how Barbara has to follow a process to award funding from CDBG? You see how even with our regular budget, we have to, if you're gonna allocate funding for a third party, there has to be a process to allocate. You can't just tell an entity, we're gonna give you 50,000 uh, 50, because you feel like it, no. When we approve the budget, we give the authority to the administration to spend money, but they still have an obligation to follow process. Uh, all I'm saying is this, this is not, and I'm gonna say one more time, it's not against this entity, but let's say for whatever reason, I will vote no on this. Now it creates a mess. Oh, he's, not a, he's against affordable housing. I just I want the games to stop. This is not about the entity, and this is not about someone being against affordable housing. What I'm saying is you, we have to understand the form of government that we have, and things need to go through the council. I just want to make sure it never happens again. This, is, this happens from time to time, and it shouldn't happen. Council President. Uh, Councilman Jackson. I just <clears throat> want to encourage you that, you know, we should move accordingly with a fair and equitable vote of lack of or confidence of. Because I'm trying to, you keep on pointing out you're not singling out this entity, mm -hmm. but every single time this entity has come to the forefront, you continuously point out some issues that you're having with the process for this entity. Secondly, a moment ago, you said that through the council, once items are vetted, the council should not question line items and or items that are approved through CD, but you're doing the same thing here. You're, you're pointing out discretionary items on, on, some, on a process that has been identical for every single other entity that has, that has been awarded. Every entity that's no. been awarded has been identical. No. We have made promissory, and you, as the finance chair, has totally con con consistently said that as council, we don't have, we don't have uh, the opportunity to scrutinize which projects are funded. But yet, you're doing that here. Then lastly, you continuously say we, but you're the only one, I haven't heard one other council person 
scrutinize the, the, the strategies or tactics that have, or measures that brought forward for this entity, no other council person but you. Now, you sit as the chairman, but how are you, how are you claiming we? I, I have never had an issue or question what's going on. So you, you can, you, you, if you're gonna question it, the process, you should more or less frame it as you. You are questioning. You consist, you're talking as the body. The body, no one else has questioned it. I, I'm asking you, I, I, would, I would like to take, take a consensus or a poll from other council members, who else feels the same way that you do? All right. But I can't help but notice that you have a, there must be something personal or an issue that you have specifically with this organization because this, this is the, it's about the sixth time that you've done this publicly. All right. And it's embarrassing. Council Thank President. you, Council. Hold, hold Council on a minute. President. Hold on a minute. So once again, this is why we're in the situation that we're in. Council members, they don't even understand their function. I'm questioning the process. Never said the funding wasn't going for a right reason. Questioning the process. Usually an RFP gets put out to see what entity wants to, you know, submit a proposal. When I passed the comment in the past that the council didn't have anything to do with the allocation of funding, I was talking about the tax credits that came from the state that was given to this administration. And the reason the council didn't have a say is because we named uh, a few years back the parking authority as the redevelopment agency for the city. So the decision on those tax credits were made by the, by the parking authority and the administration. The council didn't have a say. Legally, we could, didn't have a say. Now, this is the situation that I have. I'm never selective when it comes to you know, questioning, like I've seen people question CDBG. Oh, how come this entity is not getting this? No, I've never suggested that this money should go to any other entity. What I'm questioning is, is that in the future, if you're going to use any funding that's in our, in our coffers, that our process is in place, you don't start offering developers or whoever money before you consult and come to the council for approval. You could tell them, look, you could apply for this funding, right? But there's got to be a process. All I'm questioning is the process. So I don't know why my colleagues feel offended because the, the problem we have here is that we're very selective, just like, with, like some council members, and I, and I don't want to get off subject. If you watch all the council meetings in the last three years, some council members wanted to apply the residency requirement for the new hires, but it was very selective. If you looked a certain way, then the law applied to you. If you looked a certain way, the law didn't apply to you. I'm just trying to be fair. And I, I will ask you, uh, uh, okay, um, Director, I had this conversation with you over the phone. So I'm not doing this for the camera. I just want to make sure that I put it on the record, this is a meeting, that this doesn't happen again. Because Council. someone could question, and an entity could question, another developer could question, and say, look, how come these funds were not advertised you know, to, for us to submit any, any projects or any use of this funding? So that, that's ask, all I'm asking. Ask Council Council President. President. That's all I'm asking. Can I ask you a question? So, so, Council President. So, so you rebutted on, you rebutted on my question. Councilman, you, Councilman, Councilman, please. Um, so can I ask you a question? Uh, you'll get a, you, let, you let other council members sure. speak? No problem. They're also asking for the floor. Let's start from that end, given that everyone wants to speak. Councilman Abdulaziz. Thank, thank you, Council President. Um, Director, these, these RCAs, I know it's been, we've, we've had the, this money, and I know what we're using it for here. Just a legal maybe could answer, so the VA, are you? The RCAs, these funds in the future, I don't know, we probably won't have any in the future, could they be used for vouchers? No, and the program no longer exists. So most RCAs for many municipalities across the state are already gone. They've been eradicated years ago. Some of these dollars, as the article that was in the Herald News may have noted, many of these dollars go back to the 1990s. So really, this is never, and in the Council of Presidents' defense, like this is one of the, it, it, this is a rare funding source, and, and we won't be here again because they'll be eradicated. So, Unless, of course, the governor my, reinstates the Coalition on Affordable Housing, which I which, hope. Yeah, so I, that's what, but once again, these funds, I'm sure there's guidelines to spending them. Correct. Are these funds able to be spent for vouchers? Yeah, no. Not, for affordable I, housing. For affordable so and supportive housing. for affordable housing, housing right. these funds, I, if I'm not mistaken, are allowed to be given out as vouchers for people that meet the affordable housing criteria. My Am understanding correct? is that they're not vouchers, but rather they're income qualified. So in other words, the apartments have to qualify based on area median, median income, but it's not like a voucher. The vouchers are run through the housing authority, not through So for example, me or So for owner. example, Lucy Smith 
meets all the criteria for affordable housing, these funds are able to pay for that affordable housing wherever she's renting in the, in the city. It helps to pay for the units the to be housing. created. So it's only for brick and mortar? Correct. So it's not for... It's for the creation of affordable and supportive housing. So this project is doing grandparents raising grandkids. I understand. I'm asking for the project. I understand where we're going. Yeah, yeah. I just want to know the uses of these funds. And the reason I ask. That's good. The reason I ask, because once we build this, this is a couple years down the line. Right now, there's a need for people. We're about to have plenty of evictions going on very soon. Yep. They're about to pass a bill that just got out of committee for to restart the eviction process. People are going to need to pay their rent. So I want to make sure that these funds cannot be spent on giving affordable housing for the people that may be out and this project won't be ready. So you're sure that these funds cannot be used for people that qualify for affordable housing? Because I thought when we're paying in, when these towns are paying in, was to help with that. That's what the RCA and the COA was well, set for. To be to be honest, RCAs are kind of a way to get out of your fair share obligation. Yes. To be honest, it was a way for wealthy municipalities or wealthier mm -hmm. municipalities to shirk their responsibility and to push it onto poorer communities because we're cash strapped and we need resources. So that was one of the loopholes that was tied in with the Mount Laurel yeah. Doctrine, which is sort of problematic, which is why they sort of put it all on hold as well, which is a uh, kind of imperfect policy decision. No, I understand that, and they still not get me. So I want to hear on the record that this money cannot be used tomorrow to assist people that are currently looking for affordable housing. As no, these dollars are specifically tied to this project, which is to create seventy-four units of affordable and supportive housing. Director, take away this project. I know you're saying this project. So if it wasn't this project, we, the money, the RCA, the guidelines yeah. that the state gives us, right. Could this money be used for people that are looking for affordable housing tomorrow and we give them a voucher no. and we meet those? We don't do it. No. You can't use that. Thank Different you. Program. Um, can I go now, Council President? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, I always watch, I'm reading the newspaper, and believe me, um, a lot of uh, cities around us do not want affordable housing in their town. They think affordable housing is for poor people, um, people of color. Um, they, they, they don't want that. But, but affordable housing isn't just for poor people, people of color. You will find now more people need affordable housing than ever before. And you have towns that have been fighting forever in court not to, 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 to bring affordable housing into their towns. And I, because I cut out, I read the articles, I see them. And right now we have three cities in here that don't want affordable. You don't have that many, you don't have that many developers <clears throat> coming into the city to build affordable because of all the criteria that the government puts on them. Some of them would rather not have all that hands on with them and as they doing things, you know, they don't want they don't want that. So I've been in this city all my life. There's not too many people that's coming in here to build affordable. Um, I understand what residency is, and I understand what project base is. Project base, it stays in that building. It cannot hand it and you take it wherever you want to take it. It cannot do that. Very rarely, the federal government give residents, meaning you get this voucher, you can take it to another place. You can take it to another state. You can take it to another county. You can take it whatever. But when you have, this, this is, I consider, project-based, meaning that whenever they build this, it stays in this facility. It cannot go anywhere else. I wish more people can want to do affordable because it's not what people think it is now. More people are needing more affordable than ever before um, because of, of what's going on. These cities here don't want it. You don't want it, we'll take the money. And we can use it here. And like Councilman Albazee said, more people are asking, but we can't give you something and you can move somewhere else. And I learned that from my director over there mm -hmm. after I done talked many days with her about residence base and project base. It stays here and not too many people are walking in this city. Oh, I want to build affordable. They're not coming in here to build affordable. Thank you, Council President. Councilman Davila. So 
Director, I'd like you to clarify a statement you just made. I mean, earlier you indicated that, you know, these monies have been around since the 1990s. Um, and you specifically said that these monies were attached to this specific project. So I'd like to understand what you meant by that because I thought just in general, I, maybe the question is, can you explain to me how you decided that this would be the project that you would put these monies towards? I'm just trying to figure that out because you said this was attached and I, don't, I think that was not what you meant to say, but I want you to clarify what you meant by that. They're part of the capital stack for this project and this project is a high priority project of the administration, I would argue the council. The council's fully supported this project by authorizing the uh, acceptance of a 30-year pilot that was tied in with the loan director, housing. Director, uh, we, you said that Ooh. earlier. We understand that. We supported okay. that. I'd like to know. You made it specific. You said this money was attached to that project. I'm just asking for you to tell me how you came about that. If you decided as an administration that this type of project is exactly what you wanted to see this money go towards, then say that. But you're saying that these monies were specific for that project, and it's, that's not the case because these monies. I, the, I tried to explain what the funding source is and how it can be allocated with regards to the type of project and the discretion that's ultimately allowable. With regards to the process, it was also tied in not just with the home fund process with regards to how it was both reviewed internally by the administration as well as ratified by the council. And I also brought these funds before the council before with regards to the total capital stack so that we could get the funds approved for the pilot that was associated with the funding through HMFA. So I feel like we've been pretty transparent each step of the way with regards to the total capital stack, what the project is, and the use of these funds. And my goal is to eradicate the use of these funds so that we can move on because there is co like confusion with regards to this funding source because it is so old and antiquated. So now we get to do a great project, use these funds accordingly, and hopefully the state will find a way to, again, prioritize affordable and supportive housing so everything that Councilwoman Cotton was saying can continue to be addressed because we have an affordability crisis in this state, especially in northern New Jersey. It is impossible for working class people who are making $30,000 to be able to afford living in this general region. Okay, so, so Council President, I just, he clarified this was specifically, the administration decided this is the entity that you wanna put this money Towards. These funds are allowable for this project, and we got but, ratification from all But you chose the this. That's all I want to hear. Sure, I want, yeah. That's what I, okay. Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. Okay. Clarified. Thank you. Councilman Kalik. Uh, Director, what's the location for this project? It's on Van Houten Street. Uh, it's the old Argus Mill that's uh, where uh, Van Houten takes the curve onto Mill, Mill Street. All those parking lots that are there are going to be infilled um, with the housing as well as ground floor parking for the for the neighborhood. Is uh, by basically by that uh, falls, correct? It's like below the falls, you know, like before you go up McBride to get to the falls. But yes, it's in the same vicinity, two right. three blocks this, away. This entity that's doing the project is it a nonprofit organization or? Just well, a it's actually a, it's a it's a public private partnership between the parking authority and uh, private entities. So no, it's not, a non it's not a non-profit. It's actually Wind Development Company with uh, Juiz um, Development Company as well as the Parking Authority as a three-pronged approach for it all. What is the projected revenue will bring it to the city, this project? The projected revenue for the project, it's a $36 million project that's being subsidized through these different funding sources. The revenue stream is time. I'd have to pull back all the pro formas I gave you guys back in October when we went through the approval process for, I think it's about forty to 50000 a year, and it begins to escalate come year 15, 16. But I can get you the pro forma. You technically have it already because you approved it in October. Please email me sure. uh, if possible. Thank you. So, Director, for the future, just because you put in a capital stack for any project, just because you put funding that belongs to the city, Yep doesn't mean that the council approved it. It was a presentation that was put up. We was viewing the presentation, right? All, I, all I'm asking from you is that in the future, you follow a process to, to basically determine who you're giving money to. That, that's all we're asking. That's all I'm asking, at least. Uh, Councilman uh, Mendes? Council, Councilman Mendes, nothing, uh, Velez? You guys had your hands before, at least you, Councilman Velez. 
We have to clear up a little bit the wave here because Council President, and, and, and I know he brought it up, that he don't want to make believe that the administration is compromising funding and then coming to the council and approve it. So we want to clear that the process that you guys, uh, sorry to use the word guys, that the administration decide to do is for the good cause. Now, this is a lesson for this administration, whoever comes, that we need to try to see if we could budget something for affordable housing, for vouchers, not leave it for the county, not leave it for the state, create our own plan, our own, our own system. Because people are going to start knocking the doors from a month from now. And um, it's sad to say that when they knock those doors in 125 Ellison Street and there's no funding, where are you going to be, director? You understand what I'm saying? You know, when you look at the body of this uh, intention or proposed, it's for the good reason, for a good cause. And it was vetted to the committee, you know. Um, but hopefully, we do a lot of workshop, and before things come to a final vote, you could come down and give a highlight and not be in a defensive every time and getting red but to give us the real facts of what's coming in front of us. Thank you, Director. Council President, roll call. So just want to remind, Madam Clerk, before you do the roll call, just want to remind my colleagues to let's adhere to our rules in this council. It's not my rules, it's our you know, bylaws. Uh, let's try to stick to the two minutes during uh, roll call. Yes. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call in item number 24 for approval. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilwoman Khan? Uh, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Councilwoman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Thank you, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> so to the public, just please make note. It's simply amazing that every other item that comes before this council during a regular meeting, council president insists on, on encouraging council members to stick to the protocol. View, review items in committee. Have discussions during workshop. Why is this item any different? I just can't help. I'm not going to make any accusations, but I can't help but notice that there's a certain level of scrutiny for this project consistently every time it comes before a public forum. This project went through no different scrutiny than the stadium project, than the Overlook project. Funds was allocated the same exact way. The administration made a decision, it made a choice on how it was gonna utilize these, these funds. And I'm gonna tell you what, one, I, I, I can't help but notice one day when I talked about how I was well aware of this project and supported it from the beginning, council president automatically took on a different posture with this, with this project. But let me remind the public, this is not a developer coming into the city. These are homegrown Patterson people. In fact, one of the members has a state championship ring from Kennedy High School, who I happen to have played with. They had come back to make a contribution into this community. They've not only decided to build in their own community, but they decided to pay it forward and provide space gratis, gratis for those Spanish-speaking Americans. And they've provided space for grandparents' organization who has been giving to this community countlessly for a certain number of years. And for some reason, this entity just seems to get a, an unleveled amount of scrutiny on qu the questioning of the process. So I don't want to make any accusations or assumptions of why. But yes, are they much different than the other uh, uh, people who are coming forward? Of course they are. They're from here. So because of that, I'm happy to support this measure. And if you had a certain level of scrutiny for the director, why wasn't these items discussed in closed doors, behind closed doors, like any other item that the council president requests for them to be? Is there a certain kind of a blemish we're looking to put on this organization? Madam Clerk. Happily, my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Kalik? I don't know any um, inside or intel of who the developers are, 
but it looks this project looks uh, good to me and my vote is yes thank you councilman mendez I, I definitely support the concept of the project for grandparents raising great children um and i took my time to go over um and my vote is yes Monica. thank you thank you councilman mix and so um councilman jackson he he said it all but i want to add this out of the tax credit dollars that were given through the ERG tax credit program through the state, this was given the lowest dollar amount. This is an affordable housing project that's going to provide housing for individuals that are raising their grandchildren, which is a powerful project. There should be more projects like this one in the city because we need affordable housing in the city of Patterson. We should have had more of these projects. We didn't have an opportunity as a council to be a part of that discussion. It was presented to us. But when more money is allocated to the city, I pray that affordable housing is at the top of your purview because we need more of this for our residents. In the city of Patterson, I'm grateful for these individuals that are from Patterson that wanted to come back and to give back into our community. This was vetted in um, economic development as well as finance committee. And with that being stated, my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman, Councilman Village. Well, when people speak about affordable housing, they sometimes they miscommunicate affordable housing. You got people working three jobs and still they cannot pay the rent. You got families living in a house, marriage couple, son in college, working, still cannot pay the rent. This administration is responsible to create programs for individuals who don't meet the requirement of income, even that they work in three jobs, that we could help them out. That's plain black. When those funded comes, there has to be a plan. But I want to thank West Patterson, Horton, Wayne, that contribute to this RCA. It was sitting there and not doing nothing. So it's gonna be invested in 74 low income units. And I'll be happy for see that and seeing the faces of those individuals that need our help moving forward. But once again, the administration needs to, to create plans to make sure our landlords and tenant court don't get full from this point on. My vote is yes. Mr. President. So once again, the narrative of the council body doesn't have nothing to do with the resolution. We're not voting on the project here. I've supported the other measures that were presented for this project. This resolution, this is the heading of the resolution. The res resolution. resolution to authorize the allocation of excess con regional contribution agreement funds for the Argus Ellison development project. The only thing I asked was the process. The, the administration cannot grab funds that are in our possession and decide to just give a commitment to any entity without going through a process. That's all I ask. Never said that the project was bad. Never said that this is not the right use for the funds. All I questioned was the process and the intent of me questioning the process is so it doesn't happen again. We complain all the time about CDBG funding how is it allocated to some agencies? But at least the process was followed. You had a, a, a committee set up to review those applications. I'm not saying you have to follow the same process for this funding, but at least this has to be a process. Maybe uh, you put out you know, an advertisement for you know, other people also to submit interest in this funding. Um, and one of my council members said, let's thank Wayne and this other town who contributed. No, we're not gonna thank them. That's why the law was changed. They were paying us to provide affordable housing because they didn't want to provide the affordable housing in their own town. So I'm not gonna thank those, town, th those towns that were using the city to, f to provide affordable housing on their, be uh, on their behalf. So, and, and all I ask my council is to do the homework and stop concentrating on what each of us have to say or vote and concentrate on the matter at hand. This, we're not approving this project right now. We're, we're talking about the funding that we're allocating. Several months ago, I questioned $150,000 that was being moved from the first time home buyers um, into, the, into a, a different um, 
um, into an entity also. And that they used, at that time they used the right process, but I was just questioning how come you, we didn't give that money to the residents to buy homes. My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. President. The vote is nine in favor, none against. Item number 24 is hereby adopted. Madam Clerk, could we do number 33? Yes, sir. Next item is item number 33. Resolution authorizing the award of contract for the purchase of two 2022 Ford F-450 cab and chassis crew cab 4x4 on the New Jersey State Contract for Department of Public Works, Public Works Resolution 2135. So moved. Second. So it was moved by? Councilwoman Davila. Davila and Velez. Councilwoman Davila, second by Councilman Velez and Mims. Do we have a discussion, no? Roll call, Madam Clerk. Roll call on item number 33 for approval. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilwoman Cotton? Yes. Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Khalid? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Thank you, Madam Clerk. This uh, item was uh, discussed on the workshop extensively, and my vote is yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. I didn't even come to work. Councilman Velez? Let's keep our equipment, uh, our DPW. My vote is yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is nine in favor, none against. Item number 33 is hereby adopted. Madam Clerk, let's do number 21. 21? Yes. Next item is item number 21. Mr. President, just to remind you, it's after eight. Yes, we'll take the public just portion after Just to remind you to bear in mind for the public portion. I'll be right with you, sir. Next item is item number 21. Item number 21 reads, resolution appointing <coughs> Aslan Gauss Senior as a commissioner to the Patterson Parking Authority, sponsored by Councilman Shaheen Khalik, City Council Resolution 21341. Second. second. So moved by Councilman Khalik, second by Davila. Councilman Mendez, Councilwoman Davila, Councilman Velez. Roll call, Madam Clerk. We'll call an item number 21 for approval. Councilman Abdelaziz. Councilman uh, Khalik, you picked a great person that you're gonna put on that board. He's gonna hit the ground running. Uh, I look forward to working with him. He knows the sixth ward very, very well. If it, his home is the second ward, but the sixth ward is the second ward in the city of Patterson. I look forward to working with him to bring much needed parking into the 21st Stav area in South Patterson area. My vote is yes. Thank you. Councilwoman Cotton? Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Uh, this is sponsored by Councilman Shahid Khalid. Um, you made an excellent choice. I always say we, we're not sitting here to question who we appoint on boards, because you're supposed to put the correct person, and we have to trust each other's judgment, but you made an excellent choice um, for him to go on the Parking Authority Board. Uh, with that being said, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Davila? I would actually, you know, maybe disagree a little. I think that these appointments are, yes, us as council, we do put forth, um, and it comes before the entire body, so we have the right to question, right? But I am in agreement that um, for the most part, we choose who we believe will best represent. And there is no doubt in my mind that this individual who was a previous councilman, um, a strong councilman in the second word in his time, um, is going to do great things and he will question process, projects and so forth. So I am also, if you're looking right now, I'm so looking forward to working with you as well. Uh, my vote is yes. Thank you. Great Con choice, Councilman Khalik. Thank you. Councilman Jackson. Great job, Councilman. Uh, Shaheen Khalid and uh, Councilman, former Councilman Gao. Um, we knowing, knowing the understanding the high level of integrity that you, that you bring to the table. Looking forward to the level of uh, um, responsibility that you'll bring to this board. My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilman Khalid. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilman Gao has served this uh, second one in the city of Patterson for 12 years. He has uh, served with dignity honesty, and with passion. I believe he will bring everything 
to the um, parking authority as well. And my, it's an honor for me to appoint him uh, to the commissioner of the parking authority. My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilman Mendez? Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, Councilman Collette, great choice on just appointing Councilman, former Councilman Elsa Wangao uh, to the Patterson Parking Authority. My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilman Mims? Congratulations, former Councilman Gao. I know you're going to do your homework. I know you're going to advocate. And I know there's going to be some news articles coming from that area. I'm looking forward to them. You're going to do a great job. My vote is yes. Councilman Velez? You know, what I could say about Aslan Gao, um, I sat there on the other side when he was performing as councilman here for many years. Mr. Aslan Gao, I know as the other colleagues have expressed themselves, uh, you have this endorsement that are all of us in regarding uh, your appointment to the parking authority. And uh, yes, we're going to hear great news. Um, and that's why Councilwoman Mens expressed it, uh, of your function and your work with the parking authority. Um, so far, I'm the statue agency chairman. So uh, we're going to work together. So my vote is yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is nine in favor, none against. Item number 21 is hereby adopted. And I'm clear, can we open the public portion? Yes, Mr. President. This time the public portion is now open. And we have um, eight speakers. Our first speaker is Ms. Harrison. She's here? Yeah. Did she leave? She's right in the hallway. May I move on to the next person in the meantime, Mr. President? Brother so, Coleman, can, we go, can, can we you go grab to, her real fast? Can we go to the next one and then she'll speak after, Madam Clerk? Yes, next speaker is Mr. Teague. Um, Corey Teague. Corey He's Teague also outside. outside, so let's just... No, Council, um, Council Mr. President. Elvis they, they Durham. The, the speaker is not on our side, that's why. Did you call my name? Yes, we Yes, did. I did. Since I signed in first. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, VA. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening, City Clerks. Uh, congratulations, Fabio, on your baby girl. Thank you. Thank okay. You. I have two things that I'm trying to get clear in my head. The one thing is the sewer bill. I know it was passed that it would go back as a flat rate, but I'm hoping that the administration and all of those who are involved in this will not drop the ball and continue to fight for the other entities that are not paying their fair share. So even though it has been passed that we're going back into a flat rate, we're really concerned about the ed areas that are not paying into the city, such as the nonprofits, the towns that dump into us, and the other entities that owe the city of Patterson as a county seat money. So I'm hoping that the administration and the council does not drop this and continue to fight for those uh, entities. My other concern is the president of the East Side Neighborhood Association 2.0 has to do with two grants that were granted to the East Side Park for some work to be done. One of the grants is over two years old. This is directed to the BA. What has happened with these grants for this part that is the jewel or was the jewel of Patterson? This park was designed by the same person who designed Central Park in New York City. If you stand up on the steps in the park, you can see all the way into New York. It is deplorable the way this park looks. And for DPW to be inside of that park, they must be all blind, crippled, and crazy for that park to look the way that it does. So my question is, are you waiting on the county to take over this park? Because that's the talk we're hearing now. And what happened to these grants that were granted one is over two years old, and it was for safety, walkways, bumps, bicycle tracks. The second grant, which as the president of ESNA, I signed on for it, for the uh, tennis courts and the steps. No thought process was given to either one of these grants because they should have been looking at the barn that ESNA put money into that park to help refurbish their barn. ESDA has put a lot of money in that park. 
and it's deplorable. I'd like to know about those grants, Ms. B Madam VA. We normally, we're gonna wait for the other speakers. We're gonna okay. write it, yeah, we're gonna write it. We'll give you a response. You're writing it down? Yes. Okay. Yes. And um, I'll let that go. Those are my two main issues for being here tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Next speaker is Mr. Teague. Corey Teague. Good evening, members of the City Council, City of Patterson. Good evening. Corey Teague, 65 Prince Street. It's been a while since I've been here. We've been pretty busy in the community as always. I wanted to come here tonight because on Thursday morning at 9 o'clock, I will have the distinct honor of sending off our high school graduates from Kennedy High School um, into the world to be doctors, lawyers, um, pro athletes, uh, ministers, politicians, judges, whatever it is that they want to excel at and achieve in life. Having worked with many of these young people throughout this pandemic and with the parents, especially of special needs parents and children with special needs, because that's my area, that's who I work with, um, I have seen the struggles that those parents have dealt with and had to contend with learning how to use um, the devices at home for many of the parents. This was an on-the-job uh, class for many of them. I want to commend those parents who took the time to learn the process. We, I came in your homes. You didn't have a problem with that. I sat down with you. We learned the process together. I showed you what I do with my son and with my daughter in her learning, and we got through it. 2021 and 2020 were very difficult years. Even though we're still in 2021 right now, it was a very difficult time. This pandemic brought a lot of stress and, and aggravation, especially to us parents who have children with special needs. Nevertheless, we have gotten through it and we're still pushing forward and I wanna congratulate you and thank you. Um, also in August, I do want to remind the folks in Patterson that there is a Jamaica Day Festival coming up at Eastside Park. Um, it is sponsored by the McCoy Foundation. I wanna make that clear, it is sponsored by the McCoy Foundation. Um, as long as I've been a part of it, the McCoy Foundation has been the only sponsor in terms of getting it going. There are other organizations that join in, but the McCoy Foundation has been the primitive person in charge of making this happen. It's a wonderful event for families and for the community, and I encourage everybody to come out. Please visit my Facebook page for the dates and the times that's going to be in Eastside Park. I'm going to be performing for the Gospel Night so I want you guys to make sure you're there in, in full numbers. We're also gonna be going to South Carolina, Florence, Cal South Carolina next week, doing a CD release down there at Shoney's in Florence. So there's a lot coming up. Going to Atlanta in September to do another conference. We're moving ahead, and I want you guys to be on that ride with us. All right, so Tuesday, I'll be welcoming and, and, and saluting our students, but I'm also gonna speak to our parents because our parents were in this with us as well. Um, that's all I have tonight. Have a good night. Thank you. Next speaker, Madam, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Next speaker is Mr. Elvis Durham. Elvis? Oh, he's here. How y'all doing? Mr. Elvis Durham, 280 Dewey Broadway, Patterson. <clears throat> I came in today to talk about Part three, the crime situation that we got in the city of Patterson, New Jersey. On today, by school nine, I just heard, it was a shooting. It was some workers working on school nine building and somebody just wanted to start shooting. We have a serious problem here. Drive-by shooting, and I know the mayor, Andre Sayer, and in administration and city council has said it's not enough funds to hire policing. Where the funds come from? It come from the state, right? It come from Trenton. It come from the governor. Election is coming up in November, people in Patterson, okay? The mayor, city council said, it's not enough funds. Remember that, Patterson. Number two, drug addicts all over the city of Patterson, especially in the downtown area. Downtown area, you got these drug addicts attacking people. What I mean about attacking people, if, you, if they ask you for a dollar 
and you say no, they try to attack you. They punch you in your face. They run the customers into other cities and other towns. Okay, I got some people in here that will agree with me. They attack people. Matter of fact, they attack one of the um, Patterson workers on the cameraman, Mean, Mr. Mean. He's an old guy, older guy. What can he do? Three guys try to attack him. Okay, I need police walking on the streets of the downtown area. Okay? Um, number three, we need to make we need to make sure the kids in Patterson is safe in the parks. Someone said we need policing in the parks. Okay? We don't need nobody with no guns. We need people with guns. Okay, not without guns. We need Patterson police officers. That means get on the governor behind and say we need money. Election's coming up. He want our vote, right? We need money to hire the policing. Now, I'm coming up here calm. Y'all like this, right? Y'all, do y'all like this Elvis? Or you want the other Elvis from last week? I, I, I prefer this Elvis, okay? Like, um, I'm saying, do your job. You know what I'm saying? Stop, um, stop trying to pamper the governor. Because each and every one of us got a job. And we got to do it, right? So come on. Let's get busy. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Yes, Mr. President. Next speaker, Mr. Gregory Pope. Good evening, council, uh, viewing audience. Greg Pope, Fourth Ward. Good evening. Uh, as we know, uh, the 4th of July weekend is uh, rapidly approaching. and we know the kinds of problems that uh, this holiday created for the city last year. Uh, we have, uh, in terms of like the, the fireworks, and on a personal note, my property got caught on fire last year. Thank God I was home, I was able to get on top of it before it, it created a real problem. Um, my question is a very simple one, uh, what have, uh, what? How are we preparing, or how have we, we prepared to get ahead of this problem? Because we know it's going to come. Uh, have we partnered with the state? Have we earmarked funds uh, for more public safety officers? You know, what strategic, uh, what, have, what have we implemented strategically to get ahead of it? Because if we don't do anything, we know it's going to probably be worse this year. And uh, it, it could possibly result in a fatality. So my, you know, my question is, you know, what are we doing to prepare for it? Are you done? Anybody? Yeah. I, I, so I, we, we're going to we're going to give you an answer as soon as we finish with the speakers. Um, Madam B, I will give you an answer. Okay. And on a, uh, on another note, uh, to my councilwoman, uh, uh, Ms. Cotton. Uh, we, you, you, you know, you're familiar with me, so I just want you to know that you know we're organizing over at the Fourth Ward, and we look forward to uh, working with you to address some of the very serious problems that are specific to uh, that area. Okay. Thank you. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Next speaker. It looked like Julio Alea. Oh, Julio. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Julio Yayala from the, the Fort Ward, neighbor to uh, Mr. Uh, Hope. Uh, thanks to him, my home was spared last year from that same fire. Um, I lived in a lot of cities. I lived in New York. And I had never seen a city more dysfunctional and more disorganized than the city of Patterson. And I asked myself, how is that possible when you can trace this city's lineage to the foundation of this country? And I hear a lot of budgeting. I hear a lot of talk about affordable housing. But where's the budget for our police de uh, department, for our firefighters? And all I can think of when we think about budgeting is, well, we need to raise taxes. Well, why do we need to raise taxes? Aren't we budgeted 
in a way where we can structurally support these people and hire the necessary cops. Just this morning, I wake up and I do my walk around in front of my, in front of my property because thanks to him and to other my neighbors, we keep the area clean. Every morning I have to wake up and clean up the litter that it starts at Rosa Park and it ends up in front of uh, our houses. That's another issue. But my question is, where is the functionality within the body? With you guys and with the administration? Because I've seen videos of the mayor going around every different ward posting signs about littering and you know, cleaning up Patterson. I don't think it's working. Putting up a sign is not gonna deter the next person to just throw it on the gar instead of throwing the garbage, throw it on the floor. Where are the people behind them making sure that all this stuff is being done? So my question is, why is it that this whole entire city is so dysfunctional? I've been living here three years going forth. I bought a home right next to the gentleman. I love my home. And I plan to live there as long as God willing. But here's the thing. How can anybody besides myself want to live in a city where people are not in charge of the city. We pay taxes, a lot of us pay taxes, so we don't have to worry about that stuff. That's why the system was created. So my question is, so if I'm paying taxes so uh, 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 an entity can take care of my surrounding my issues, what do I need to pay taxes for? What do I need to pay the city any taxes when my services are not being met. As simple something as simple as picking up the, um, the recycling. Mm -hmm. It takes two weeks for that to happen unless I give a call or my next door neighbor gives a call or Gregory gives a call. And again, I apologize, I understand the situation where the city is at, but we need good leadership. We don't need this. Thank you all. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Yes, sir. Next speaker, uh, Mr. T Atif Coleman. See, you know, this happens to me every time I come to these meetings because I had something prepared, but this gentleman, I forget your name, um, spoke very passionately and said some of the things that um, I've been thinking since, because I'm from New York and I moved to Paris and this will, I'm going into my second year. And uh, that, that was one of the first things I said to myself is, who is running this city? Who is running this city? Because it, it, you don't have to ask. You can just look around and see that uh, no one is in charge. So, you know, I really hope that you guys or somebody is paying attention because this is serious. This is, this is not funny anymore. This is an embarrassment to you, Ruby Cotton, and little Lisa Mims who've been born and raised here. How did they get this bad? What, did, what went wrong? Because this city is, I'm, I really wanted to speak tonight because we have a serious homeless population across my building and it's getting bad. Someone got hurt and blood was all in our lobby floor and um, uh, you know, uh, the police were called and I'm told it took hours for them to get there. But um, you know, this is serious. We've got a serious quality of life issue. And um, I just wanna address that. And I also wanna address uh, Mr. Durham because he made it very clear that uh, you know, there's no one running the city. And we need, we, need, we need to listen to Elvis because he's been dropping stuff at this mic for a long time. Y'all need to take Elvis seriously because he is speaking the truth. But I just wanted to address a couple of other things. I wanted to say happy birthday to Cotton and welcome her back. And uh, I also wanted to um, thank uh, my councilman, first ward councilman, Michael Jackson, um, for um, uh, supporting and, and not beating up on the CDBG lady and uh, supporting her and not attacking her. And um, that's it, thank you. Thank you, next speaker, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President, next speaker, Mr. Casey Melvin.
good evening, members of the council, our elected. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Um, I would first like to start out by thanking you all who participated uh, on June 5th in our um, Patterson Healing Fest, one of the first um, events, citywide events, dedicated towards healing and um, um, uh, emphasizing the importance of the celebration of uh, Wear Orange Day. Uh, it's to honor and celebrate the lost the individuals that we lost as a result of gun violence. The event was a total success um, in, in many ways. The community got together. Um, several organizations um, participated and help, helped us organize uh, different types of events in every, uh, pretty much the hot spots, the so-called hot spots of the city. Uh, they all came together. I seen many of you. Um, I elected to come out. Appreciate that for you coming and um, supporting the event. Also to um, our community organizations. It's too many for me to name, but um, uh, off the top of my head, um, the First Ward Wins, uh, the Nation of Islam, and um, other organizations. Men stand up. Um, we want to thank you all for providing a safe, secure. Um, environment as well as emphasizing the importance of uh, how violence is a public is still a public health crisis and we need to do whatever we can to address that also um, to the community policing division they did an excellent job by showing their presence and um, assisting us with keeping our communities um, safe I want to talk a little bit about uh, some legislation that was implemented and proposed I want to thank dr. Dr. Mims and the other council members who, who co-sponsored it, uh, that speaks in reference to victims of violence and the difficulty that they're having with seeking housing. There's a very, very serious problem that's been overlooked as it pertains to individuals who have been victimized by violence. And um, I myself is uh, guilty of not really taking it as serious as it is, only because I'm in the business of it now where we respond to um, victims of, um, of trauma as it relates to gun violence and um, stab wounds that we've learned through our process that, are, that there are not many services to help these individuals. As of lately, um, we've incurred countless um, stumbling blocks and blocks and, um, and um, barriers um, to support some of our participants. Some, without giving too much information now, are paralyzed as a result of gun violence, and they're finding they're having difficulty um, getting housing. You know, one of the um, basic essentials that everybody needs housing, and they're having difficult difficult times. So um, our our, um, our partners at St. Joe's Hospital and members of the, of the council have um, took the initiative to draft um, a legislation or ordinance to ask you guys to support us in our endeavor um, with. Um, the housing ordinance as it relates to uh, victims of violence. And I want to just uh, bring it to a head. Um, this legislation um, does, is not asking for anything free. All it is really asking in a nutshell is to provide opportunity for individuals who have been victimized by violence to receive housing. They're not asking for free housing. They're not even pretty much asking for a discount. Just the same rights and privileges that are afforded to everybody else to be afforded to them that a percentage of any development, not all of it, not an entire unit or facility dedicated towards victims, but a percentage yeah. of housing be allocated towards victims of violence. So I'd like you guys to really take, take it in thank heavy you. consideration. And um, thank you for your time, and I apologize for being so okay. long-winded. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Yes, Mr. President. Last but not least, uh, Mr. Mustafa, the last speaker. Good evening, everyone. I'd Good like evening. to start by congratulating the uh, council president for the new baby girl. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, listening to the, the, spe the speakers before me made me believe strongly that I'm here for the right cause, because the last thing this, the city of Patterson needs is legalizing marijuana. Uh, I stand in front of you today in a strong opposition to all six classes of marijuana business in the city of Patterson. On June 13, David Zimmer wrote on the North, NorthJersey.com, options for housing the state marijuana industry in North Jersey are going up in smoke. More than 24 municipalities in Passaic and Bergen County have introduced or adopted already ordinances, ordinances restricting 
all six classes of cannabis business. Why did they do it? Why did they do it knowing the argument that more than 65% of the voters in Bergen County and Passaic County voted in favor and approved the amendment to the state constitution legalizing recreation on marijuana? That's a question all of us should think about it. And the answer in my, in my opinion is because the two decisions and two, two votes are completely different. We're talking about completely different animals. Most of the people supported the legalizing of marijuana because of the social justice component and concerns that they have. Not because they wanted, to be, not because they wanted marijuana to be commercialized in their towns. The mayor of the borough of Pompton Lakes, Michael Serra, said, said it best. He said he believes the support wasn't necessarily an invitation to the cannabis industry. At the end of the day, they probably, the voters probably, didn't want it in their own town. They were assuming every other town would want it. As of today, more towns in Passaic County are opting out of all six licenses. Totowa, Ringwood, Bloomingdale, North Heldon recently introduced measures to ban the six classes of cannabis business. Pompton Lakes, Wayne, Woodland Park, the one that changed its name from West Patterson, because they didn't want to be associated with the name Patterson, they also already adopted the ban on the six classes of recreational marijuana. The mayor of Woodland Park, Mr. Keith Kesmark, said in explaining the ban, I think that it is cautious decision because this is new to New Jersey. We are going to take a wait and see attitude to this. See how it works and how it un upholds, or how it unfolds. He continued to say, by banning it, we, this is very important for everybody to listen. By you banning it, you reserve your right to accept it or deny it in the future. This is such a, moment, a monumental step for us. I would encourage a cautious approach. I had more to say, but I would say, please, time is running. If we don't do anything by August 21st, then we cannot do anything. You are responsible for the city of Patterson, and I'm, I trust in God and in you that you will do the right thing for the city. Thank you. Thank you. There more speak, no more speaker for the public question, Mr. Move President. Second. Move to close by Councilman Velez, second by Councilman Mendes. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call to close the public portion of the regular meeting of June 22nd, 2021. Councilman Abdelaziz. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I want to thank Dia Mustafa for coming here. Uh, this, Council President, you weren't here at the last workshop. This item needs to be on our next workshop. The clock is ticking. If we are not asking, I'm, we I'm ready to debate with my colleagues the pros and cons that I feel. This needs to be on our next workshop and not a 20 minute discussion, not a 30 minute discussion. We need to have a, this is something new in the entire state. We need to put aside a good 45 minutes an hour right. to discuss the route that this city is gonna go when it comes to marijuana, our, our cannabis and, and the, the consumption and the retail of cannabis. So the Mustafa, thank you for coming here. It, council president, whoever the council president wins our next workshop in July, it needs to be on and we need to act fast. Other towns are doing it, and if we don't act, we literally open up the floodgates for anyone to do anything. So the ball's in your court to the council president and to the administration, or not the administration, corporation council. Please have, to have something or be ready to prepare something for this council. My vote is yes, thank you. Thank you, Councilman Cotton. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I just wanna say um, to some of the speakers that spoke earlier, um, Ms. Frances Harris, you know, I was against the flat rate for the sewer bill, but the council colleague felt that the flat rate was better. Um, Corey T., I'm glad you're doing something for the kids that are the young adults are graduating from high school. And let me tell you something, they've been in the house so long that they need to have some kind of out. They need to, to, to get out and be around. Um, you know, we've been talking about, we have our police chief here, um, uh, Mike Bicora, um, I don't know if we can, he can answer some of the questions that was asked about the police department, especially with the fire department, I mean, uh, the fireworks. I live on 27, I had a problem myself. You know, I chase people from around my house because the, what I'm worried about when the firecrackers get on your roof, 
and that's it. A house down 27th Street caught a fire last year because of the fireworks, and, and her garage burned down. And you know, you try to say to people you cannot, especially when it's a dry weather and it hasn't rained in a few days or a week or so, when they hit that roof, you, you, your house is gonna go up. So our police director's here, hopefully he'll be able to say something to you about the fireworks. Uh, uh, and of course, I'm happy that you uh, moved into my ward uh, on Warren Street. Um, Warren Street, correct, Mr. Pope? Yes. yes, Warren Street. So I haven't had an opportunity to speak with you, but I will. And also I want to say to a T, this homeless is a bunch of outsiders. I see it. Every day I see different people. I see all kinds. I see it, and, and you know, and I, we had a meet before with these um, uh, straight and narrows, and you know, they don't have a, a exit plan. When those people come here, they need to get an exit plan. I said it to the administration over and over, we need an exit plan for those people coming in here. I want to say to Casey Melvin, the yeah, Orange Day was really good. I went to two spots in my ward, 10th Avenue and East 26th Street, and Godwin and Carroll Street. So those are my two areas that you had on today, and I thought it was really, really good. The people were really excited. And I want to say to the last speaker, before I, hang, before I stop, um, like you're right, council members here, we better decide what we're going to do by August 21st. Because if we don't decide what we're going to do, and there's six components to this cannabis, six pieces to it. Uh, I just came back from Nevada. I had the opportunity to went to a uh, dis uh, distributor, uh, not distributor, disperser. And um, I was really amazed on the operation they had in the state of Nevada on how they did that. So I would talk with my council colleagues once we bring this up, because there's six pieces to that. And we got to make a decision by August 21st. I thank you all for that. I just was trying to get it all out there for you guys. Uh, and we need to really look at affordable Councilman. housing. I said it over and over. Madam Clerk. My vote is yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilman Davila? So, Council President, we have had a discussion in, in the past um, and other colleagues of mine that clearly there has to be a thorough conversation and not a quick conversation. I, I think I even said that maybe a special meeting specifically just to discuss only cannabis and these six licenses and what we're going to do. In addition to that, you know, I want to see with the administration, I want to see the chief of police there. I want to see the captain of narcotics. I want to see other entities because it isn't just are we going to decide. We can't say anything about delivery. That's, that's a must, right? It's legalized in the state of New Jersey. But the reality is, is how it's going to roll out and what we as a city want to see. Because at the end of the day, and I won't go into the full discussion, we say no to this, we're still going to have the underground. So we need to think about this in, in bigger terms, and that's what I'm gonna say right now. So to the administration, I'm looking forward, not just the council, we need to have the chief here, we need to have Director Spezial, we need to have the fire chief, we need to have the captain of narcotics and other individuals so we can know how we are going to roll this plan out. So with that said, Council President, and to all the speakers, thank you very much. Um, I, did, I was in the back and I did hear all of you. Um, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So I'm gonna to try to address all of the concerns of everyone who came to the microphone because this process is really, is terrible. You know, our jobs is really here to answer to the concerns of the constituents. But the process in which the council president has chosen to, um, to inject doesn't afford us a fair opportunity for all of your concerns to be answered. In the past, you'd be answered individually so you could come here and address your concerns with the administration. The administration, since they've been here, has never, ever once answered the concerns of the constituents that come to the microphone. Just wanted to point that out. So Ms. Harrison, you're absolutely correct. I'm happy that you as well have had a change of heart when you've seen that you saw a reduction in your, in your yearly sewer statement. And there's a lot of other people who've seen that reduction. So I'm wondering what your position is on the previous uh, uh, non-flat rate service that was that had given you an increase, a substantial increase. But I really must comment on your comment relative to the, the DPW being the blind, deaf, and dumb. We have, to, we have to make sure we don't go to that length because the, the members of DPW, from my perspective, they do a very good job for what they're given to, to work with. They're the least paid employees in this community. We're not giving them any slight. They work, on, they work with equipment that's over 100 years old, 
and they do the job in spite of being short, manpower, and so on and so forth. So if we're gonna place a, a measure of blame, let's place it where it belongs. That's at the administration level where they fail to give them the proper and adequate whatever, service, training, equipment, whatever it is. The job needs to be done at the top. We can't put blame on people who are just doing what they're instructed to do. So I'm gonna leave that there. Brother Teague is gone, I'm hoping he watches back. He made a comment regard, with regard to celebrating with those high school seniors. I think there's a level of accountability that's needed. I would like for Brother T to come back and present to us the graduation rate of our seniors that have come through from, from freshmen to seniors and talk to us a little bit about where these he outlined these people are going, those college-bound students. Tell us about the number of college-bound students. Tell us about the number of professional athletes that he just quoted. I think to date we only have one in the league right now, that's Mike Adams. I think we just had a young Dominican kid that just got uh, drafted to the M M MLB. But, you know, I think that there needs to be a clear outline of what that is. I'm sorry, Council President, I'm going to go over. Sure. Council uh, uh, Elvis, Dorm, there was a man that was beat under the trestle just today. His family called me. I called uh, members of the police, the, the PD. He has a plate that was put in his head. His he was beat in spite of that. He was walking with a cane, his sneakers were taken, he was beat unconscious, he's in the hospital now, getting ready to go undergo surgery on a broken jaw and things of that nature. You're, everyone is absolutely right. This city is out of control. It is lawless, it's out of control, and there's absolutely no plan in place that I have seen to, to uh, converge on that. Um, Brother Hope, I didn't even recognize you. I apologize when I came in and didn't say hello. Longtime friend, and, and I, and I um, sympathize with your with your issues. I concur. We should not live under such fear that our home, not only is our home could possibly be uh, burned, but that these 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 fireworks that's going off. I was at a championship game where my daughters went to, where, or the divas were playing in yesterday. We, we 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 hosted a visiting team from out of town, and I could not help. To, to notice that when fireworks started going off, the entire team, these young girls who were visiting, turning around in such fear because they knew they came into Patterson and started hearing something that's relative to gunshots and they felt fearful for being in that community. I don't know if you, you noticed that, Director, but that, that's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. I remember b blowing off uh, fireworks and you were fearful that the cops were gonna come and take them or take, you know, give you a ticket or something but it just doesn't happen here anymore. It's, it's another legal activity, I guess. So um, that's, relative to your point, brother, and I apologize for getting your name, for getting your name for, from the fourth ward, you're absolutely right. We, this community, this administration, this municipal body, this government has decided when we wanna raise revenue for the city, we raise taxes. We have negated the $140 million in tax credits that was given to blow, breathe life into the community that was supposed to t return residual income, none of those tax credits will return any residual income and they create minimal jobs, less than 100, I believe less than 50. So when you talk about not having revenue streams and things of that nature built and putting the burden on the backs of the taxpayers, you're absolutely right. I cannot negate that point and I challenge anyone here to do the same. Dysfunctional, you have, I have to agree. And lastly, I'm gonna close right now, Council President, because you know this, this, this limit on time to address the community's concerns is a big issue. Brother Atif, let me explain something to you. Every single person on this dais, including the mayor, every single person who has sought out a, a vote from anyone in this community who has come to that microphone, who has presented themselves as a potential candidate, who has come here debated with other people, have taken pledges to do something different, to come here and to hold people accountable. For you to go there and, and present the, the term that I attack the, the director of, eco, of, of, of economic, I'm sorry, of uh, community development is a complete fallacy. If I don't hold her accountable to make sure that the organizations within my community are getting rewarded for the work that they do, then who is? If I come here and I sit here and I applaud 
everything that's going on, when everybody here that comes to the microphone acknowledges that there is such a dysfunction in this city, then what am I doing? If I come here and agree with everything that's happening and I say, bravo, Councilman. what a phenomenal job you've done, then what you am I doing here? Am I doing you a service? Councilman. I come here and I Can pledge up, that I will be strong and firm and I will hold the line Councilman. in holding people accountable, but yet and still we place with that kind of painted with that kind of brush. And that's extremely up? unfair. Councilman, I'm trying to answer the concerns of the community. I, Would you mind giving me a moment, please? My yeah. vote is yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you, Councilman. Thank, thank you. you, Councilman Jackson. Councilman, Councilman Mendez. Mendez? Th thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, so before my vote, I definitely would like to address uh, some of the speaker. And I know Francis, Ms. Francis Harrison, she's outside, but you know, definitely she mentioned the, the change on the flat rate on the sewer that definitely will bring a, a, a relief on some of the home and a lot of the homeowners, but the job is still not done. At the finance committee today, we have a discussion about uh, having total and health connected to our sewer uh, bill uh, connection, and they're still not paying the amount of money that they're supposed to be paying. Um, the commercial side, also, we have to work on that. So I'm definitely looking forward to have that conversation after July 1st back, back on the table to have that discussion. Um, and also, when it comes to Eastside Park, you know, the Resolution 36 is the award of the contract uh, for the uh, Eastside Park path, not to exceed $124,000. But the two grant that we're supposed to receive uh, were denied by the county. We're going to hear from Madam B.A. later on about um, that situation. But Eastside Park is in definitely terrible condition. Uh, for the viewers, for Brother G, that contact me and all the uh, constituents from the third ward, I spoke with the director about the fence, the portion of the fence that need to be removed in tomorrow immediately and, por and a portion of the playground because it's a safety hazard. If somebody get hurt, we as a city, we are responsible for that. The director knows about that. Tomorrow we're going to address that problem, that situation, and I'm looking forward to have a conversation with Madam B.A. about uh, some capital improvement when it comes to the, um, when it comes to Eastside Park, the tennis court in all the different areas. That's a beautiful park. It's one of the most beautiful parks, but we definitely have to pay attention. I know there's, there's a conversation on the table about you know passing the, the right to the county to move it, but that's something that we're going to talk about, about later. It's not, it's, not on, it's not on the table. Uh, you know, and I know to Mr. Gregory and Mr. Julio, I, I hear you, your frustration when it comes to service, and that's how taxpayers feel when, in the city of Patterson. You pay taxes. The reason why you pay taxes is to make sure that you receive to service that in terms of recycling, in terms of the, the cleaning of the street, the collection of the garbage, the safety in the city. And this city is just not, it's dysfunctional. The amount of drug addict, the amount of homeless that we have in the city doesn't make sense. You go around, it's not only in downtown Patterson, it's all over the city now. It's all over the city. And that's something that the administration needs to take responsibility. The job of the mayor is to check the day-to-day -day operation of the city. And, and I'm extremely concerned 4th of July is coming, it's around the corner. It, it's, it's just a chaos in the city, so I, I, I would like to hear from the administration some plan and how they're gonna, uh, how they're gonna address this problem that it take week after 4th of July. Um, so, you know, with that being said, last but not least, I mean, I know the last speaker, he spoke about the marijuana legalization in the city of Patterson. We, we have until August 21st, but we, we must take action, and, and, and we're looking forward to, to receive something on the table very soon, uh, because otherwise it's going to be out of control in the entire, it's already out of control in the city. Uh, with that being said, my vote is yes, Madam Clerk. I'm Councilman Mims. So I'll stay within the two minutes. I want to thank all of the members of the public that come out week by week with their concerns and um, sharing their um, issues, and I do agree with a lot of them. We live here too, so we share the same concerns that you have. The fireworks and the loud noise is totally out of control in the city of Patterson, um, and we definitely have enforcement issues. It's hard when you're around the corner, you hear the noise, it's gotten so bad in some of the areas I physically have driven to some people's homes and knocked on the door because you can't go to sleep. That's the only way you're gonna get some relief by knocking on the door, which becomes dangerous after a while. But we definitely have some concerns um, and to the administration, there's many people that have come to the mic. Um, I pray that you reach out to them, give some level of response to all of the residents that have come out tonight to share their um, issues and or concerns. 
um, and I believe based on the way they've spoken, they all love the city that they live in, but they want to see the services rendered to what they pay for. With that stated, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Velez. I'm going, resume, you know, I'm going to make my little resume of, of everything to all the audience out there. You know, we, you have listened to the podium, um, to the community coming before us. You know, firework situation, loud music, now the marijuana legislation, you know, the panhandle situation in the city, the homeless situation, lack of affordable housing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Fortunately, we are the legislative body. And I feel embarrassed sometimes and ashamed that we have given the tools for be able to correct and to work towards this situation in the city. And you go over that. How many times we have done ordinance or resolution of addressing the quality of life? We gave this administration the tools to address those situations. You know what bothers me and council president, you probably get received this call too and any council member here. One day, 90 calls, all stand by waiting for police response. I was on the phone with, with, with one of the situation, and they was calling 911, and the 911 was falling in Wayne. Wayne was trying to revert it back to us, revert it back to Wayne. 90 calls in standby to get, you know, and my, I gotta say my police officers and the leadership police, you know, we need more cops. The governor had to listen to us. We overcrowded the city of Patterson, but something had to be put in place. And I'm not going to stop, last but not least, I'm not going to start giving my ideas because they're not going to take it anyway until I put it in practice myself. So saying that, I would like to answer all the constituents' complaints and et cetera, but you know, the time is limited. I'm trying to stay in my two minutes and 30 seconds. My vote is yes. Thank you. Mr. President. So I heard, you know, the public um, regarding the, the money that was already allocated for Eastside Park, that money's already allocated regardless of what plan has been discussed or is, will be discussed. The money's been there. We need, to, we need to put it to use, right? That's one. Sewer rates, they're still a work in progress. We have to look at, uh, do a study to see, uh, I'm not gonna prolong this conversation, but there's a study pending. We already discussed it previously. Regarding the services, this is a discussion we have all the time. We as a legislative bodies, we put the laws in place. We also approve the budget for the administration to provide the services, right? When it comes to our departments, we have acts. My first thing on the job, given that I work with, you know, in this area, in the finances, municipal finances, for many years, the first thing I did on my, um, um, my first year on the council is I told the administration to submit a capital plan. A capital plan is basically major expenditures, right? We use a capital plan to resurface the roads um, and to buy equipment for DPW. First year, we didn't have anything submitted to us. I'm not saying they didn't submit it to the administration, but nothing was presented to the council the first year. So that's the year that we have two sweepers in the whole city when we were supposed to have six. Now, I think we have like eight. We're supposed to have like eight. I don't know if they're still working, all of them. The second year, I brought this up again. I don't want any, any excuses. My residents are paying for services, um, and they got to get them. So does this budget have everything? Uh, does this budget have what it takes to improve the services in the city? Yes. DPW submitted a long list of things that they wanted to buy, and we approved it. So every year during the budget process, I ask the same question. Do you have everything you need to provide the services? The answer is yes. So, Mr. Uh, I, I forgot your last name, Julio, and, and Mr. Gregory, um, is all, your concerns are all related to quality of life. This is something that we need to improve and we know, but
But as a legislative body, I'm not here to put blame. You don't want to hear blame. You just want to see the services improve. We made the allocation. And the administration have a job to do. They need to change the culture of, of how things get done in this city, right? Accountability, right? I'm not going to be here defending anyone, and I'm not going to put blame on anyone. All I'm saying is it, it, it could be my brother working in any of the departments. If he's not doing the job, we need to hold him accountable. So it, it comes down to accountability. Now, you asked uh, if we have enough funding for police officers. That should not be the excuse that they do have, though, is they're having a hard time recruiting new officers. Then when they do get them, a lot of times, the town, other towns take them away. But we have the funds in place. We just haven't been able to fill positions. And I had a conversation with the administration to look into other areas. We have a ratio right now uh, of officers and firefighters are one to one. That cannot be in any city. This is the only city probably we have this ratio. Uh, but that's a conversation for another time. I'm not suggesting you lay off, you know, firefighters, but at least try to reduce to attrition and let's put more money. At one time we have 500 and something police officers in the city. Right now we have less than 400. And we are budgeting for 400 something only. But at one point we have over 500, is my understanding. Um, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you, Mr. President. The vote is eight in favor, one absent. The public portion for the regular meeting is now closed. Move to close. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Clerk. Can we do the consent agenda, please? Yes, Mr. President. Next items on the agenda are consent agenda items. All mass matters listed on the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the council and will be enacted by one motion. The items listed under the consent agenda are number six through 19. Any item may be removed from the consent agenda by the request of any council member, and if so, removal will be treated as a separate matter. So move. Second. Moved by Councilman Velez, second by Councilman Mendez. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Madam, Madam President. I'm sorry, Council President. Discussion. No, one moment. I'm just, I don't need a discussion. Just have a quick question. Yes, the Councilman for, Jackson. Uh, just wanted to make sure. The item for um, vote for the SID, the downtown SID, is it not No, that's item no, number no, five. No, no, it has to be separate. No, that's okay. separate. No, Very good. I just wanted to make sure I didn't have an opportunity. It's number nope. five. Good. It's number five. No problem, Councilman Jackson. Roll call, Madam Clerk. No. Uh, let, can I explain something, Madam President? No, yes. The SID um, budget, we treat, it's, it's pretty much like our regular budget. So this is right. an introduction, and then we have to adopt it at a certain another date. So it's separate, it's not. No, I understand that. But I, the, the reason I asked, I had a, count, a discussion with Councilwoman Davila earlier. She, she wasn't here last week. No. She asked me about it, and I told her, yes, it was on the agenda. And okay. she mentioned that it was on consent. I said it should not no. have been. No, it would never be on consent. It, it's I'm number sure. five. No, no it would never it's, be on consent. Right. So may not I continue? A, not a problem. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call, Madam Clerk? Yes. Roll call and um, consent agenda item 6 through 19. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Council Councilman Velez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Madam President? Yes. The vote is five in favor, four absent. Item six through 19 on the consent agenda is hereby adopted. Item number 31, Madam Clerk. Yes, yes. Next item is item number 31. And item number 31 reads, resolution authorizing the award of contract for reconditioning of football equipment on the ES Co-op agreement number 65 MCESCCPS ESCNJ 18 slash 19 dash 24 for the Division of Recreation and Department of Public Works. Public Works Resolution 21351. So moved. So moved. Moved by Councilman Velez, second by Councilman Mendez. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Roll call on item number 31 for approval. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Um, Councilman Kalik, we are voting on item number 31. 
H3 Revolution authorizing the award of contract is for reconditioning of football equipment. Yes, Madam Clark, my word is yes. Thank you. Madam President. Yes, Madam Clark. The vote is six in favor, <clears throat> three absent. Item number 31 is hereby adopted. Can we do item number 32, Madam Clark? Yes, Madam President. Next item is item number 32, and item number 32 reads, Resolution authorizing the award of contract to Bayer Ford for the purchase of two 2021 Ford Explorer K and B, base for WD under ESC Co-op Agreement number 65 MC ESCCPS ESC NJ 20-21-09 for Department of Public Works, Public Works Resolution 21352. So moved. Move. Moved by Councilman Mendez, second by Councilman Velez. Roll call, Madam Clerk. We'll call an item number 32 for approval. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilman Khalid? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Madam President? Yes. <coughs> the vote is five in favor, four absent. Item number 32 is hereby adopted. Item number 34, Madam Clerk? One second, Madam President. 34. Next item is item number 34, and item number 34 reads resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute a site access agreement between the city of Patterson, Public Service Electric and Gas, and Langdon Engineering and Environmental Services, Inc., for the installation of five monitor wells. Public Works Resolution 21354. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman um, Velez, second by Councilman Mendez. Roll call, Madam Clerk. We'll call an item number 34 for approval. Councilman Abdelaziz. It's very lonely on this side, but the council's functioning. My <laughs> vote is yes. <laughs> Councilman Kali. <laughs> Councilman Kali, number 34. Councilman Kali. Yes. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you. Um, okay, so Councilman Jackson, you're back. We're voting on item number 34. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm number 34. One, pass one moment, please. Pass for a minute, okay. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Velez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Madam President? Yes, Madam Clerk. The vote is six in favor, three absent. Item number 34 is hereby adopted. Item number 35, Madam Clerk. Next item is item number 35, and item number 35 reads resolution authorizing the award of contract to Jack Doherty companies for the repair of a vector truck for the Department of Public Works. Public Works Resolution 21355. So move. Moved by Councilman Velez, second by Councilwoman Mems. Roll call, Madam Clerk. We'll call an item number 35 for approval. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Khalid? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Velez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Madam President? I just want to duly put it on record that the majority of the items that we're voting on are for the Public Works Department. They are in dire need of equipment, and so we are voting on these items as we speak. My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you. The vote is six in favor, three absent. Item number 35 is hereby adopted. Item number 36, Madam Clerk. Next item is item number 36, resolution authorizing the award of contract to Jag Paving Corp for the Eastside Park Path Construction, rebid number 20.23, for the Engineering Division of the Department of Public Works, Public Works 20, Resolution 21356. So move. Second. Moved by Councilman Mendez and Councilman Men Velez and Mendez. Second by <laughs> Councilwoman Mems. Roll call, Madam Clerk. We'll call an item number 36 for approval. Councilman Abdelaziz, number 36. Yes. Councilwoman Davila. Pass. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kali? Yes. Councilman Mendez? This is the award contract for the Eastside Park Path, NAC to exceed $124,000, 375. Um, as I expressed before, um, we have the discussion at the Finance Committee that the two grant 
were um, not accepted by the county to this, uh, for Eastside Park. So, Madam B.A., so I'm, I would like to, if you could explain just for the viewer, uh, we've been having a lot, a know, lot of conversation we, about uh, that. Point, we're point of order, call. we're in the middle of roll call. No, no, I'm, at the end. I'm sorry, let me just finish. So, at the end of the meeting, Madam B.A., before, before tonight, if you could let the viewer know, because we've been talking about a, a lot about those two grants um, based on the condition of Eastside Park. And I'm looking forward to have the conversation with you tomorrow about the improvement on the park. So my body is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Um, Councilman Villains? I'm happy to see that uh, in the past, the Councilman of the Third Ward, Bill McCoy, was, was talking about the path of the Eastside Park. Always talking about when they're going to fix that. People need to jog. People need to do things on Eastside Park. So finally, Ms. Harris, it's going to get done. It's going to get paved. You know, it's moving along. Hopefully, people visit more the Eastside Park than the Garrett Mountains now. So my voice is yes. Thank you. Um, Councilman Davila? So the reason I wanted to pass is that actually I wanted to hear what some of my colleagues um, were going to say. And I'm actually I'm in agreement with everyone, right? But I'm also concerned. Uh, because I know that there has been some discussions and we have, it has not been brought to us as, as a whole uh, about a possible shared services agreement or possibly having the county um, take over our east side park and west side park. Something that, you know, is definitely a consideration uh, because I know how well our parks will be kept and the additional a security that we will have in terms of our sheriff's department and so much more. The concern that I have and before I vote on this is I know these monies are already allocated, right? They were already assigned, so we have to move forward, right? The concern that I have is that when we start having those discussions, uh, Councilwoman Mims is part of the Community Development Committee as well as myself, uh, Councilman Kalik, and uh, Ruby Cotton, Councilwoman Cotton, and I know that one of the questions that I asked there is how much money thus far has both parks been given? And the concern is that we receive these monies and these monies will have to be paid back. So are we ready to do that though? Probably almost one million for Eastside Park and the 50,000, was it 30 or 50? 57,000 for 57, Westside West Side Park. So Madam B, are you listening to me? Okay, so those are some of my concerns. So I'm gonna go ahead and support this, obviously, you know, um, anything to, to better our parks, uh, but the, there's a bigger, bigger, definitely bigger conversations to, to be had. Um, Madam Clark, my vote is yes. Thank you. Um, Madam President. Yes, and just for um, clarity, we did clar get clarification today, Councilwoman Davila, that as long as the parks are being utilized and remain as a park, that we won't have to refund back that, those dollars to HUD. So that's clarified, so we don't have to worry about payback and all that. There just needs to be a signed agreement along with uh, the council's approval, and then we'll be fine. So we clarified that today. Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. The vote is seven in favor. Two absent, item number 36 is hereby adopted. Madam Clerk, item number 28, please. 28. Next item is item number 28. You have to have everybody. Um, Madam President and honorable council members, this resolution requires six affirmative votes. And item number 28 reads, resolution authorizing calendar year 2021 emergency temporary appropriation for the month of July 2021 Finance Resolution 21348. Council Second, President. Moved by Councilman Velez, second by Councilwoman Mems. Discussion. discussion. Councilwoman Davila. Um, I really would like to ask our, uh, the body if we can have our finance chair here. I do have certain questions. Yes. And I think that this item is something, as you heard our clerk say, it needs six affirmative. And so um, I would like if we can go to another one and then come back to it. So Councilman Velez just stepped away. We would need him to come back to remove his motion. He's... Is he available? Councilman Velez. Just one second. My apologies. Well, I just want to have a thorough discussion with the full body. Because Councilmember Les stepped away. I think he's getting the attention of Council President. Okay. President, does. 
Sorry to the viewing public, but there definitely needs to be it's some, someone. Council President, is there any people that want to ask the CFO any questions on this item? Anyone? Yes. Oh, here's. I don't. Oh, I don't they want to speak to my. No. Council President, they want to ask you questions as it pertains to the emergency appropri appropriations to allow employees to get paid month by month and other issues that are there. My apologies, Council Thank President. Thank you, Council Members. Council President, um, I requested just to put it later, not for you to come out right away. No, that's fine. Do, do, we, do, we have a do we have a first and a second? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes, on the floor. Okay, so yeah, we're in discussion. Or are we just going to vote? Yes, we're in discussion. Okay. Well, what I wanted to ask, Council President, I know that this is procedure. You know, we have not, um, we have the introduced budget, and we do not have, uh, we have not I've okay. had the full discussion, so we, I know that we have to do these. That's not what the question is in here. Um, I think what I wanted to ask you as a, our finance chair, okay, is that I know in the last um, appropriations there were certain uh, amounts that were removed, very minimal, you know, and I was not part of it. I was not here um, for that special meeting, which, by the way, I also want to apologize. I was told it would be at 9, and it, you okay? And it was at five. So, you know, that's why I'm asking the questions now in terms of the allocations um, pertaining to certain departments. So, <clears throat> so if you look in the, in the actual body of the resolution, mm -hmm. um, in the front page, they actually want 14 million 439. In June, they wanted 21 million to 30. And then from April through May, which is two months, they actually asked for 70 million. And it has to do, the, the fluctuation has to do with the timing of when certain payments need to be made. I know in April we have pension payments, which are large. Um, I'm sure the CFO takes into account, you know, our, our debt service and, and so on. So this is what is needed at this time to continue to operate uh, the city. Uh, the budget was introduced. We received the introduced budget and we approved the introduced budget. The next step will be to adopt. When the introduced budget was presented, we didn't have the letter from the state, the, the transitional aid mm -hmm. commitment from the state. Um, Madam BA, uh, do we have that now? Yes, we do. We received it. In okay, good. So, so we'll be having, we'll be presented with the actual budget for adoption soon. Uh, but in the meantime, since we don't have an adopted budget, we have three legal ways of spending money in the city, and this is one of them which is through the budget. Okay. If we don't have a budget, they cannot spend money. Okay, so I guess my last question would be is to the CFO, how much percentage-wise, I see the amount, are we in terms of already expended out? Expended or appropriated? Appropriated. appropriated is 65%. 65% of the budget. Okay, thank you very much. And like I stated before, 65, but that's because there was uh, some payments that are just paid at the, you know, at the beginning of the year, like uh, the pension, Pension payment is, is, a, is a big, uh, big amount actually. Anything else you want to add, uh, CFO? And debt service. And debt service, yes. Debt service is about 18 million. So any, any other? Uh, roll call. All right, roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call on item number 28 for approval. Councilman Abdelaziz. Yes. Councilwoman Khan. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, we know that the city, uh, we must continue to uh, operate um, sometimes we may not agree, but we know that we need to continue to operate, to continue to make sure we make payroll, uh, which is very important. Uh, with that being said, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Khalid? No. <coughs> Councilman Mendez? No. Councilman Mims? Oh, Council President? He's still there. Councilman Mims, I'm sorry. We need six votes. Councilman Mims? Yes. So um, before I vote, voting on this ensures that the city operates. Voting on this also ensures that our employees get paid. We've been through this cycle before. We know that we need six affirmative votes. I'm never going to stand in the way of the city's business or employees that work hard every single day to make sure the city operates. My vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Velez? 
Once again, I thought it was going to be an easy one, only $14 million on it. So, um, as, as we stated before, um, you know, we only have one meeting on, um, on July, a regular meeting. So, and we're trying to um, do what we have to do. I always say the administration is responsible how they spend the money. We are here to approve the appropriation. So my vote is yes. Thank you. Um, Councilman Dalvano. 14,439,665 is yes. this resolution, am I correct? Madam yes. Clerk, you, yes. have, you said you voted yes? No, that's not what I said. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at Councilman. No, she didn't hear what I said. She said you said yes. No, I didn't hear what you said. Can you repeat, please? No, I said that this, this specifically is for the 14 million 439 and 665. Yes, that's, what, that's the number I have on this resolution. Okay. I just wanted to put that on record. My vote is yes. Thank you. Mr. President? Yes. You know what? The vote is seven in favor, two against. No, no, no. Item number 28 is hereby adopted. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Can we do item number three? Three. Okay. Yeah. Um, now no, we're in the next what? item on the agenda is our first reading ordinances. Item number three, no public hearing is required. An ordinance creating Paddy's Code Chapter 277 entitled Housing for Victims of Traumatic Violence, Economic Development, sponsored by Councilwoman Dr. Lelisa Mims, Councilwoman Marisa Davila, Councilwoman Ruby and Cotton, and co sponsored by Councilman Louis Villets. So, so moved. So moved. So moved. Move to table uh, for this So moved. Move to table by Councilman Villets. I was a move first. Okay. The table we gotta see if there's a second. Table the so move the to table by the council members. But what is, what is the reason for table? We uh, haven't even opened it. Uh, you want me to give you the reason? I thought we had a first and a second. Too. No, we have no, first. no, I moved no. the table. I, I'll second, Councilwoman Mims. So there's a wait. second for a move and a second. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Council President, I was loud and clear before she did the move to move the table for discussion, for further discussion. No, Ca then, Council President, let me be clear. This item has been before this council for months. We've waited through Corporation Council to see if there was so, any commentary from the council. To date, there has been none. So we so waited. Order, order. So, order. Ca so council, council members, before order, we order. enter a discussion, mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying, but two of my colleagues, two members of this body already have a motion on the floor. Now, if the rest of the body or the majority of the body feels the way you do, then the item will not be removed. Well, there's a motion in the second. Councilman no. Cotton seconded I me. Second. He only has a motion. Well, we got to interrupt for this motion. <laughs> Who got to second my motion? Madam Doesn't Clerk, you, the motion Madam table Clerk do we have a motion to table from Councilman I heard Villes. Villes. The table. And it was second by Councilwoman um, Cotton. No, no. The table. She, no. she did not. No, she I did not, not table. Okay. He didn't. No, and we want to hear why he so wants we to want table it. So, so, okay, so, 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 so this is this so council, council members, council members, council members. No so you don't have a second. Table. You don't have a second to table. Second, ca council president. I, second I think there should what? be a, dis a reason why we're having this discussion. Second so I would second the table. Okay, so now you have a first and a second to table, Madam Clerk, uh, discussion. So uh, if I if I may, and I'm going to say this. So this is something that I can say that in February. Councilman Morris started a conversation with myself. He is the person that wrote this resolution. He is the person that, became, that came not here true. when we had the discussion that did not know that we were having the discussion. There were various of our colleagues here who said we need to have a further discussion, that we should have it in workshop. Now, I was not here in workshop. So I didn't have the fair discussion. I was not able to be here. So the reason why Councilman Velas asked me and I said, you know what, I do want further discussion, specifically because Governor Murphy was here uh, a few days ago and I know that state supersedes, okay, uh, uh, municipal um, uh, law. So I, it's my understanding that there was a signing in Calvary Baptist Church of the Fair Housing Act, 
with that said, that will remove all of these questions and all these impediments that are, 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 are being put upon some of our um, constituency here in the city of Patterson. I've had a lot of people call me, both sides. And so to me, I want, just like there was somebody here that spoke against cannabis and went out there and addressed Councilwoman Cotton and I, there has to be a bigger discussion. It just can't be something that's done quickly, and I'm not going to support that. I'm in support of a process here. <laughs> I'm in support of an organization that came together and has been doing excellent things, excellent things in, in our community, the Patterson Healing Collective. I'm in full support. Mm -hmm. But there's a bigger question here when it comes to the overall picture and the concerns of certain council members. And I'm putting it here on record. That conversation was had with Councilman Morris. Councilman Morris then addressed and reached out to Councilwoman Mims. We have been part of several discussions, but we didn't discuss thoroughly. I haven't sat down with Councilwoman Mims at all to discuss this specifically. We have not had that discussion. And so other of my colleagues addressed me as well. So either we table this so we can have the bigger discussion, or do we vote this down? You know, and so that is why I'm saying, this is not that I'm against it, Okay, this is that I think there needs to be a further discussion and I have not been part of this collective body. It has to be entirely. It can't just be that there's five people here and it's talked over quickly. You see how sometimes we get up and we have to go? Things are pushed quickly because there's not a lot of people to, if they have any questions, to address you know, certain Council items. Council President. So that is the reason why, Council President, I second the motion to table. Council President. Really noted, Councilman. Council President. So let me just say this, and I'm glad that Healing Collective, you heard it yourself. I want you to hear what's going on. This has, first of all, it's not true that it was just Councilman Morris, as you both know. Councilman Morris and myself have worked tirelessly on this. Language has been changed, it has been amended. It was in our committee, we had a committee discussion Initially, there were only a few members' names on this as a sponsor, and others wanted to be added to it. This is how it went down. So we, if we're going to be honest, let's be honest. Councilman Morris started it. We worked on it together. It wasn't just Councilman Morris. Councilman Morris is a former councilman. He's not a current councilman. He cannot get legislation done. We worked on it together. There were some language issues. We had to talk to community development to make sure that we, we didn't go against HUD guidelines. Then we worked with legal. For a while, this has been kicked down the road. It was not signed. I had a discussion with economic development and legal where they came to a consensus with the language. Last week, this was presented in workshop, not just last week. This has been going on for weeks and weeks and weeks, and finally, it is now signed off on. I am glad that it's openly being stated that it's being tabled and not by me. I want Healing Collective to know, and I'm also going to put it on the record, the bill that was just signed that was written by Assemblyman Wimberly, Senator Singleton, uh, Assemblywoman Reynolds, and Assemblywoman Spite, and co-sponsored by eight other council people, has totally nothing to do with this. It's a totally separate bill. That bill is for housing for people that are ex-offenders that come out that have been incarcerated. Has nothing to do with that. I know what the bill says. I have the bill that Assemblyman Bim, they wrote. I was there at the signing. This is totally and separate and apart. So if they're looking to table, which they have a first and a second, I just wanted on record how the process really went. And there is a workshop in July, so if that's the case, I just wanted on record to the public and the community that is watching. I've been pushing this alongside of my colleagues. It's been at this desk. This is not just tonight. It's been here for a while. I want you to know that. It's been here for a while. We've been on the Healing Collective Collaborative Call, and many people have said, I'm supporting you, I'm with you. And they were like, I'm with this uh, ordinance, and now it's a totally different story. So either you're with them or you're not with them. Tonight, the proof is in the pudding. Council President. Tonight, the proof is in the pudding. Okay, Either you are council, or council you member. are not. So, so that council is member, what it is. Council member, we all, listen, we're a body of nine. No, Council so, President. Hold on a minute. Yeah. So sometimes the public say, oh, the council is dysfunctional. No, we're, we're nonpartisan here. Everyone is for themselves. But we also have to respect our colleagues. Just because you feel strong about a, a, a piece of legislation that you're working on, 
the job of any legislators to try to convince your, your, your colleagues to support something, not to fight them in the middle of the floor. Mm -hmm. um, but President. I'm not fighting. So, so, so Councilman Velez, do you mind if gotta, we, you know, no, you, no, you did gotta, the motion to table. Do you, you mind if we just do a roll call? Uh, actually, uh, actually, Council President, I'm not, I, I, Council you President. could do the roll call after, after, yeah. after me, why I want to put the motion to table for more discussion. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, for more discussion. Councilwoman Mintz stated that it was vetted to committee. This was vetted to committee, um, two people, and the director, Mike Powell. Right. And hold on. It was vetted, and that means approved for go moving forward. Now, the, the situation we had, and I agree with her, it was the language on it. Even the director of community and development Mr. Power, they don't know where we was going to get the money for to support this. They came back saying that we cannot use grant from the city of Patterson regarding CDG money. There was some problem with the language. The reason I'm tabling, and, 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 and I know she addressed uh, Mr. KC and, and, uh, and the coalition, Healing Coalition, is that we're not against a people that have been suffering. Victim, people are victims. We, we just want to discuss this a little bit further because if they did it, some changes, I was looking at it, I don't see the changes that we requested. You probably had the meeting with them, but I, was, I only sat down in Council. one committee meeting. So we're not saying we're killing this. Cut. We're saying we want to study a little bit Cut. more and moving forward. And the other thing is that you could look at the record way back that I removed my name as a sponsor so, or co-sponsor on it, so I would not like to vote up and down an item that my so, name shows in there. So, so, so Council President. So, so, so Council Members. Council President. Ho hold so on roll call then. Council Members, hold yeah. on a minute. So listen, we're in the middle of a discussion. If you want to give your justification for you tabling it, you have two minutes before you vote. You could have done that during the vote. Um, we, it is clear when you table something, that doesn't mean you're against it. Maybe you need right. more time to look into it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Um, but so, Council Councilman of the Disease. Thank you, Council President. So, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I am against this. I'm going to vote no on it. I'm going to vote it to table it. I want to vote on it, make sure this doesn't come back. We're looking at a piece of item in front of us, and I just heard something that's, that members of St. Joe's were in the process of drafting this. No wonder they carved themselves out of this resolution. They're building 70 units up the block from um, the, the hospital. How many units are for how many units are for gunshot or stab victims that's in this ordinance? Zero. They took out nonprofits to protect themselves because it does look discriminatory. The Fair Chance Housing Act that Governor Murphy signed into law allowed for people to not ask questions about their past. Did not ask you about your criminal record. This item passes. We may have a landlord tell a domestic violence victim, sorry. I cannot give you this apartment because I got to give it to a gunshot wound victim. How would those domestic violence people feel? How would it feel for disabled residents that need a place to stay? So I am against this. I don't, I'm going to be clear cut. I could see why it was drafted. Now I see why St. Joe's carved themselves out and their future projects and because they wrote it. And it's on there on your first whereas on one, two, three, four, five, six paragraph. I have many more to, do, to talk about. I will gladly debate this if it doesn't go to table because I have a page and, and I will take this on second reading. The residents of City Patterson need to know what's being written mm -hmm. because we're starting to draft things for certain groups. Domestic violence victims, disabled, autistic families that need housing. These are the items that could affect them and this is the resolution. Okay. So, Council, Council President. President Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Council Mendez. Um, thank you, Council President. I think that it's, it's important. I know that there's a motion to table, but there's been a lot of question in terms of the legality of this legislation. And I always like to refer and pass you know, the, the mic to Corporation Council. And that's the reason why we have him here, to make sure that we you know, are in compliance under the law. Corporation Council, what is your say on this, having said Justin up to now and all of that? May I, uh, Council President? Corporation Council. Thank you. Um, 
uh, the legislation as posed, as drafted, that sits before you has gone through the legal department. We reviewed it and signed off on it. Yes. So, by the point of order, Council President, if we, if we order? are calling table for the... more discussion, you know, for more discussion on this, Corporate Council, I think that that should be in a workshop and explain it from A to That's... Z to move forward. I have to have a so, discussion. So, yeah. so Councilman, that, that's not his call. I know, but that's he's, your call. He just reviews the, the, the resolutions and gives an opinion on, on its legality. Yeah, but, it is not for him to but, decide but, if his workshop No, or not. no. What I'm saying is if we go to go back and forth to he going to give his opinion, it's going to raise a discussion already. So, so Councilman, you, you, already, you already did what you needed to do, right? All right. You're not, you, you, you call for a, uh, to pull this item. Let's vote. And you got a second. Let's vote. So okay. let's vote on... on uh, I vote to table for the table. I, I have a question for. Uh, you have a question, Councilman yes. Salik. Councilman Mims, how come? Uh, how did Saint Joseph opt out of this uh, resolution? Like, well, I'm not aware I thought, that Saint, I thought, I, I'm not aware that they opted out. That's what Councilman Abdelaziz is saying. I, I don't see. Six, opt out six paragraph where it says, whereas in order to ensure that there is sufficient inventory of safe, affordable housing available to victims of traumatic violence, which traumatic violence is defined as shooting victim and stabbing victim, the city seeks to ensure that for-profit developers, not non-profit, for-profit. So St. Joe's is the largest non-profit in Passaic County, therefore they're carved out of this resolution. But Councilwoman, you said you wrote it, so, so therefore so you if, should if, know that. If that, if that is the... Uh, you still have the floor. Yeah, yeah, asked, Council, hold, hold, me a, I understand, but you're going to get the floor. But Councilman Kalik still I, has I, I the think floor. He asked me a question. I understand. I, I know, but, but I think this legislation needs to be, be more vetted. I think we should include the nonprofits exactly, as well in this all. resolution. So that, that's so what the, I, I think the, the question that, that Councilman Kalik had is to so you, now, directed to so you. Can I answer like, now? Given that, given that you wrote it with Councilman Morris. So can I answer know, it now? Yes, yes. <laughs> Unless someone else's name is Dr. Mims. Uh, so if that is if that's a, a, a concern or if that's what you're inferring into the ordinance then what should be done is that can be an amendment to the ordinance no, move that, to table for is, discussion if, if that's what the case is but if if that's what it is but let's be clear what it is is it that or is it something else we could do that on the all right so let's just pass our comments during the two minutes while we vote madam clerk roll call on the amendment to the table to table. Yes, Mr. President, I, I need to have um, a date when this will be tabled next or workshop. will it be indefinite, so the next workshop. Or indefinitely? July 13. Well, August. Eh? Okay. Over. We have a proposed date for July 20th, which is a regular meeting. That's yeah, the date I would have to put Madam on Clerk, the record. Uh, I think we want to further discuss it. It needs to go back to workshop. So did we want to put it indefinitely for now? Indefinitely for now, yes. Okay. Any council would, member could put anything in the workshop agenda, so. Uh, so we're not putting it on July 12th? You could no, put, yeah, yeah, any council member could put it in the workshop agenda, so you could put it on the 12th. So we're gonna remove it indefinitely, we're gonna table it. Yes, okay. Roll call to table item number three indefinitely. Um, Councilman Abdelaziz, the table. Absolutely. You heard my comments. <laughs> I still have about two pages of more right. information that needs to be discussed, and uh, my vote is yes. The table. Councilwoman Cotton. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Um, as my Councilwoman Mims had stated that, um, you know, we have amended um, items and resolutions and ordinance uh, on the floor. I see where um, they did um, for, for profit only. Uh, we got about five nonprofits here in the city that do b development, that build housing, that do affordable, that do all of that. Uh, I think that we can correct this, and I think that we can move forward with this. Um, so my vote is no to table. Councilwoman Davila. So, as I stated, um, there is no need for anyone, you know, to come before live TV, okay, and make statements uh, not true, because basically you're calling people a liar. So I'm gonna say this um, to my officers, we sure that that's firecrackers, right, fireworks? Because it sounds really bad out there. My apologies, Council President. Um, I'm gonna state it again and again. I have the first draft of this ordinance that was written by Councilman Morris months ago. 
Was I then part of the, the rest of the discussions in terms of developing it? Absolutely not. Do I support such measure for our healing collective, Patterson Healing Collective? Absolutely. Okay, but the reality is, is that we need to have more discussion and we have not had it as a whole. So it can go to a committee, it could be vetted and be put forth in a workshop. But I have not been part of the, con the full conversation with my colleagues. So I'll continue to state it. There is no need to lie, there is no need to make anything up. I am the person that told Councilman Morris that the measure was on a workshop agenda, I'm sorry, on the agenda, and he came to speak, and he stated he did not know that it was on. So with that said, you know, I'm in support of tabling it so we can have a further discussion. My vote is yes to table. Thank you. Councilman Kalik on the table. Madam Clerk, further discussion is needed. My vote is yes. Okay. Councilman Mendez. Thank you, Madam Clerk, and, and to you know, Patterson Healing uh, Collective and Brother Kelsey. There is no perfect legislation. I, I think, you know, I just go to my colleague, please, you know, uh, we don't have to take all glove off and, and start going back and forth, calling each other a liar. I mean, there's no need for that, please. I think that, listen, uh, it, and I know, you know, we've been talking about this piece of legislation for the longest, but, but things change. And there's nothing wrong to go back into workshop and make it perfect. <laughs> We want to make sure that when we approve something, it's going to be something that is going to be beneficial for the community. <coughs> now, I feel good legislation that is that that doesn't have any any you know any any way of uh, enforcing or, or getting the resources. So, with that being said, I'm looking forward to have the discussion at the uh, workshop and and make it perfect, make it better. So, my vote is yes to table, Madam Clerk. Thank you. So, Patterson, let me say this: one thing that I am not. I am not a liar. This came before this council, it's been kicked down the can. Let me tell you who are the members of the Economic Development um, Committee. Can I, I want I, you to hear. Mr. President, Madam. He said yes to the table. Right, I didn't, I, I have, if your turn next, I didn't call your name, I'm sorry. Okay, so, so let me tell you who no, the me, the one mem second, Councilman Mendez. So, Councilman, I'm sorry, I was speaking to the President. Councilman Mendez said yes to the table. Yes. So Councilman means your turn to vote. Let me tell you who the members are of the Economic Development Committee. The members are myself as the chair, Councilman Velez as the co-chair, Council President Flavio Rivera, and Councilwoman Davila. When we had the meeting, only two of us showed up to the meeting. So it's not that this has not went through the process. It's not that it has not been discussed. This is an operable document to see who's on committee, who shows up to the meetings, who does it is sent out always in a timely manner to ensure that people come to the committees and they're there in the meetings that we have. This has been going on for a while. I understand that tonight is going to be tabled indefinitely. To me, if it's something that you're saying, let's talk about it. It would have been tabled to July 12th, not indefinitely. That to me speaks volumes. Patterson, listen to what's happening. Not all the emotions, not all the overdrive. Listen to what's being stated. If it was something that could have been amended just for a small tweet, the date would have been July 12th. We've done it before for many other um, ordinances, other languages, that was not done tonight. It is indefinitely done. Madam Clerk, my vote to table is no. Thank you. Um, Councilman Velez. So, so let me, let me uh, once again, we sympathize with the situation, affordable housing, we sympathize with uh, people, any kind of victims in the city of Patterson of crime. But when I see that they say profile, uh, say for profit developers, when we have dozens of nonprofit organization in the city of Patterson, so we could juice the, the private developers, but we're not gonna make accountable also and responsible the nonprofit of the city of Patterson. That have to have a big discussion because probably they're not gonna be agreeing on this either. So this has to be more vetted. This has to be more discussion on it. And once again, when they call for this meeting, they say, we need to discuss an item and I need you there. So that meeting was called with one person because I asked where was the other members of the committee and 
and you know, and this is a problem. This is a problem of leadership in the council. If you are in charge of committee, make sure you have quorum in your committee. Let me tell you something, Council President, and it's happening a lot. Since committee, well, I'm not going to debate that. I'm not going to debate that. So we're going to do things right or we don't do it. So my, my vote is, I want to make, uh, put for the record, Madam Clerk and, and Corporate Counsel, I want totally my name removed as co-sponsor of this resolution because you cannot present me a, an item and then tweak it and change it and without coming back to committee to approve for workshop. Not because you speak in the, in the committee, two individuals have to go automatic through workshops. So my vote is yes. Uh, no. Uh, what is it? Yes to, to yes to table, table for table. Thank you. indefinite. Thank you. Mr. President. So for those council members that want to remove their name and already voted, you could do so before it goes back to workshop. Correct. Um, on another note, listen, council members, there is no need to be deceitful. And the reason I'm passing this comment is because we assign committees. But then the committee chair oftentimes decides to do the meetings during the day, right? I work, a lot of us work during the day. To give you an example, another council, another council colleague here was in DPW. He couldn't make it to DPW, I think it was last year because the council uh, chair, he just walked out, <laughs> he decided to do the meetings during the day. Now, if, if you really want your colleagues to be at the meetings, then hold them in the afternoon. So when I accuse my other, my colleagues, Councilwoman, most of your meetings are during the day. I just call, I just call Director Powell, and this is the, the problem that I have with some of my colleagues. You know, they have a tendency, and, and I don't want my last meeting to go like this. Let, let me just go back to a positive <laughs> note. Let's get back to business. I'm sorry, I apologize. I don't know why I let, you know, some of my colleagues drag me into this uh, discussions, because it's not beneficial at all for the city. Um, I don't know what the issue is, right? Anytime I present something, if any of you want to table it, I welcome you. What is the rush? If it's such a good measure, it will get passed. If any of your colleagues want anything, if you want most of your colleagues to support it, then you will be happy that they want to table it. They just don't want to vote no against it. You should be, you know, you show some gratitude that they just want to table it and maybe entertain it at a different time. So that being said, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. My vote is yes to table. Thank you, Mr. President. The vote is six, six in favor. The table, one absent, two against. Um, item number three is tabled indefinitely. Council President, I'd like to just make a quick statement, please. We just finished discussing this. No, I know, but I need to, to make a statement because this, it, this goes on record. And I'd like the record so, to reflect. Councilwoman, hold on a minute. I didn't give you the floor yet. The, the reason I don't want to entertain a, a, a statement on this matter, we already closed no, it out. No, it's actually pertaining to a, a statement you made about the committee. That's it. Well, I don't want to go into the actual um, item. So, so, Councilwoman, we have, you know, later on you're going to close the meeting. Let's just, let's just continue the meeting. Because I don't want you to say something, then another council member is going to ask for the floor, and it's not fair. No, it's actually an action that you took, is what I wanted to state. If you so, give me 10 seconds. So, so councilwoman, let's, let's just continue with the agenda, please. Uh, 25 and 26, Madam Clerk, you stated that we haven't done those two. Those are done, I was told by Councilwoman Mims. No, we still have, uh, Mr. President, no, 25 and 26 is not. So let's do 25 and 26. Right, and then we have the other second and first reading. Our next item is item number 25. Resolution authorizing setting aside tax sale certificates sold refund to, certif to certificate purchasers and purging of fewer charges with respect to Block 4609, Lot 79, 9.01 and 9.02, also known as 20 and, 20, 20 and 21 Mill Street, owned by LSC Partners LP. Finance Resolution 21345. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilwoman Mims, second by Councilman Mendes. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call on item number 25 for approval, Councilwoman Khan. 
number 20. Yes. Thank you. Um, Councilman Jackson. Councilman Kalik? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mims? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is five in favor, four absent. <laughs> For absent, item number 25 is hereby adopted. Number 26, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Next item is item number 26, resolution authorizing an award of contract under competitive contracting to Claims Resolution Corporation, Inc. for third-party administrative services in connection with commercial general liability, business automobile, automobile liability, and workers' compensation self-insured claims program RFP number 2021-10, Finance Resolution 21-346. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman Mims, second by Councilman Cotton. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes. Roll call in item number 26 for approval, Councilwoman Cotton. Yes. Councilman Kalik. Yes. Councilman Mendez. Yes. Councilman Mims. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. The vote is five in favor, four absent. Item number 26 is hereby adopted. Madam Clerk, before we go to the first, uh, second reading ordinances, yes, and sir. The first reading ordinance, um, officer, do, do you mind asking my council colleagues uh, to come back in here? Mm -hmm. If you don't yes. mind. Thank you, appreciate it. So, so respectful. Mr. President, I think we completed we all do? the non-consent items. All those are completed. We'll do so number five, we Council have, President. We'll do number five. We just well, no, have. No, number five, I think you need five no. votes for number five. Yeah, only five. We have the FID budget. You don't got five? Yeah, but you don't want to take a chance. If, if one person votes no, then you'll hold. No. If one person, it's a majority vote. No, it's a majority. Excuse me? It's a majority vote. Right, it's a majority. Madam Clerk, I'm Mr. Able President, to I think we should have the entire body come back that's, that's my opinion to do also. number five because we need at least five votes to, for, to approve this introduced budget and then we'll have, <laughs> I'll announce the public hearing once it's approved. Is there some thank way you, right thank about you, that? Thank you for reiterating that, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. You know, it's majority. If it's three, two. It's a majority, yeah. We still win. It's unbelievable. It is. They are going out there. I think we, could, we should just move on. Well, let's take first reading orders. Let's take second reading. We still need. Not for second reading orders. Madam Clerk, how many votes do you need for the second reading orders? We need five for second reading. How do. many do you need for the first reading orders, Madam the Clerk? The majority counts. Okay, so let's do, let's do number, number four. Okay, next item is item number four. Um, these are our first reading ordinances. Item number four. Um, no public hearing is required on this out ordinance. An ordinance vacating an easement at 361-367 Market Street in the city of Patterson, Passaic County, New Jersey, Department of Public Works. Do I have a motion? Do we have a motion? So moved. Moved by Councilwoman. Uh, second. Uh, Moved by Councilman Mims, second by Councilman Mendez. Roll call, okay, uh, can, I, can I have a discussion? Sure. Um, okay, we're doing an easement for this property, right? Who can help me with this? Well, what is your question? But, well, the question was, you know, I remember last time when I tried to get easement, I had council members that want to know if we give an easement up, do we get more money? Uh, is the easement that we give into this property, is it, um, do, does it change the taxes? For that property? Which one? I don't know. They say the address is three, 361, 367. Uh, yeah, Council President, may I? Wait a minute. I'm still talking, Council oh, oh. I'm sorry. That's what I'm trying to figure out. The property that uh, we're giving the easement to, is it, does it go towards their tax bill or whatever? Maybe I'm thinking, maybe well, I'm thinking wrong. Well, are we giving this to somebody or are we taking away something? Number, number four, Councilman. Right. For first reading. I understand that. 
So did you get your answer? Um, no, they don't know. They don't. They, they don't. They're not sure. I remember it happened to me a couple of times. They're looking with, into it right now. They're right, because a couple of council members where if we're gonna give property uh, more land so, to a business. So then, council members, could, could you remove your your motion? That way we could entertain the other two. Okay. I'll remove my motion. I will, I'll take it. Yeah. Do you want to remove Number it? Four. Council yes. Mendes. I yes. remove my motion. So they're removing their motion, uh, Madam. They're Clark. withdrawing. Yeah, just Councilman Mims and Councilman Mendez. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so we're gonna entertain a different item. For number okay. Four. Yes. So we're gonna work at uh, which item, Mr. President? We're gonna do five. item one and two. Yes. Second reading two. ordinances. Okay. Our next item on the agenda is our second reading ordinances. Item number one, for second reading, public hearing is required. An ordinance designating Putnam Street between East 16th Street and East 18th Street as a one-way street eastbound. Department of Public Works 2102. Second. So move. Is that uh, by? Uh, Councilman. Move. So okay. who moved it? I Councilman second. Ruby Cotton. Yeah. I second. Councilman Cotton and I second. second by Councilman Velez. Yes. And Councilman name. Mendes. Yeah. Do we have uh, this to, clo to close the, the public hearing? Move to close. Second. If the president really didn't open, no. We have to open. The, the public hearing is now open for item number one. Mm -hmm. Seeing none, may I have a motion Move to close? Move to close. Second. Moved by Councilman Velez, second by Councilman Mendes. Roll call to close the public hearing. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call to close the public hearing for item number one. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilwoman Cotton? Yes. Councilman, Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kalik? Yes. Um, Councilman Mendez? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is nine in favor and none against. The public hearing for item number one is hereby closed. Roll call. Mr. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call in item number one for second reading. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilwoman Khan? Um, I would just like to say to the constituents out there walking on Putman Street and Warren Street, uh, this has been at least six months, but at least we're starting to get it done. This is second reading, making each way a one way. Uh, with that being said, thank you, my council colleagues, for approving this for me. Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilwoman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Khalid? Yes. Councilman Mendez? This was uh, thoroughly dis discussed <laughs> at the DPW committee, and this, uh, for the record, yeah. Even that councilwoman Ruby Cotton is now part of the DPW committee. She always get my call Monday early yep. to be at the DPW committee meeting. My vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is nine in favor, none against. Item number one is hereby adopted on second reading. <coughs> number two, Mr. President? Number two, Madam Clerk. Yes. Next item is item number two for second reading. Public hearing is required. An ordinance designating Warren Street between East 16th Street and East 18th Street as a one-way street westbound, the Department of Public Works, 20, Ordinance 21026. Second. Second. Move it. <laughs> Who moved it? Who moved it? Councilwoman Cotton. Councilwoman Cotton. Councilwoman Cotton. Councilwoman Cotton, and it was second by Velez and, and Mendes. Roll call, yeah, roll call, my, uh, actually, the public, public hearing. Here. The public hearing is now open for move item. To close. The public hearing is now open for item number two. See no one, may I have entertainment. See no move to close. Move to close. So move to, uh, move by Councilman Mendes and second by Councilman Velez to close the public hearing. Madam Clerk, roll call. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call to close the public hearing in item number two. Councilman Abdelaziz. Yes. Councilwoman Khan. Yes. Councilman Davila. Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kalik? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is nine in favor and none against. The public hearing is now closed for item number two. Motive roll call, Mr. President? Yes, roll call, Madam Clerk. Roll call and approval of item number two for second reading. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilwoman Khan. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I, uh, this will help. Putman Street and Warren Street runs the same direction. Um, this would really help the um, the traffic flow there really good. So, with that being said, thank you, Council Members. Uh, my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilwoman Davila. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Kali. Yes. Councilman Mendez. Yes. Councilman Mims. Yes. Councilman Velez. This started way back when I was the chair of DPW. <laughs> Finally, it's getting completed under the chairman, uh, Mr. Mendez. Hopefully, we move forward with this kind of work. My vote is yes. Thank you. Mr. President? 
Yes, Madam Clerk. The vote is nine in favor, none against. Item number two is hereby adopted on second reading. Can we do number five, Madam Clerk? Yes, Mr. President. Next item on the agenda is item number five. And item number five, introduction of the 2021 Downtown Industrial Park Special Improvement District Budget. Resolution addressing 2021 budget procedure requirements for the Downtown Industrial Park Special Improvement District. Authorizing reading by title only authorizing budget introduction, directing the clerk to advertise it and schedule a public hearing, and directing the assessor to prepare an assessment rule of properties within the district. Finance resolution 21325. Second. Second. Moved by second. Councilman Velez, second by Councilman Mims. Discussion. Uh, discussion, Councilman Jackson. So I'm not going to even bother laboring this. Uh, you know, I've made my point multiple times with regard to this and my consistent contention because I speak to a great deal of the owners and residents and members of the uh, of this SID. The director gave some testimony or some commentary at his last uh, appearance through the, the workshop. I'm in total agreement. I think right now the downtown area is as worse as ever been. The entire city as a matter of fact. So it's not really anything directly totally directly at the city, but I do have a question. Corporation Council, I made a request to the director that I wanted to see um, some information relative to the members, relative to the participation in the voting process, and the director has given me a list of members only and a list of the board members, and then he says to me that he cannot divulge which I made an official request, and I, I was in, under the impression, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that I'm entitled to do uh, review, and uh, I'm entitled to all documentation relevant to pertinent city business. And I don't know why the director feels or is, 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 is giving me the, the response that there's some type of secret ballot that was conducted, this is a public meeting, it uses public dollars, and I'm, I just asked for what members of the, of the CID participated, and I'm being denied this information. Can you explain to me legally why I would be denied? How are you, sir? Is your microphone on, sir? I'm sorry. Is your mic on, Dominic? A little uh, out of practice. So I understand why you'd make the uh, inquiry, uh, but I'd need to find out some more information. I don't really know uh, why that would be. Obviously, SIDS are uh, established with a unique statute that allows them to exist. Um, their own members determine how to fund, how to spend uh, the dollars that are assessed through a special tax assessment. Uh, but it is true that you do approve that budget. We, so we I'll find out it. for you and get back to you. And we do approve it, we do provide oversight. And how can we provide oversight if we're not given the, the material that's being requested? Yeah. So um, I, I know that you, you have to do some further due diligence and some research. Do you think that there's anything off the top of your head that would preclude uh, a council member or restrict one of the council members from any such information? Uh, again, uh, the, the general leaning towards any expenditure of public dollars is transparency. Correct. Uh, but again, I need to do a little more uh, research to find out what happened here, what exactly this is about, and we're happy to get back to you. So council members, obviously hearing the commentary from our city attorney, I'd ask and uh, make a motion to table this item until that review for our corporation council can take place and, and the director can provide that information. And um, we'd, we'd appreciate if I can get a second. President, the, may I? Cut. No, no. Point of order, council president, there's no, we're a not motion. Gonna discuss. There's, we, only have a, a we only have a, a motion, we don't have a second. Do we have a second? Second. So 
So do we have a motion then? So discussion. I second. Discussion then. You second the table? Second the mm -hmm. table. Okay, so we have... Uh, we uh, got a discussion after the motion. Councilman, uh, definitely, but let me oh. just call, you know, the motion. So Councilman Jackson moved to table and it was seconded by Councilman Mendez. Councilman um, Velez, call for discussion. Councilman Velez, you have the floor. As you notice, the title of this resolution is addressing the 21 budget procedure requirement for the non-town industrial park and special improvement district, authorizing the reading by title only, authorizing budget introduction, directing the clerk to advertise it and schedule a public hearing, and directing the assessor to prepare assessment role of property within the district. That's a process to make sure that the bills goes out accordingly to the bylaws or, this, or, or whatever is approved today so they can move forward. If we hold this, there's gonna be a problem of collection to be able to satisfy the SID uh, budget. So, you know, saying that, let's go to roll call then because I'm explaining what the title says. So that will give us time when we approve it to get all the answers that Councilman Jackson probably has and the time it comes. Council President. Council, Councilman Mendez, then uh, Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Council President. I know the, we have the downtown improvement district budget by title only in front of us, uh, but I definitely are very, um, I'm, I'm insisting into having the conversation with the administration along with the director and I expressed my concern to the director on the last meeting about making some changes on this budget. We all know what's going on with our police department. The, the business owner downtown, they're being harassed by drug addicts, by homeless. And they, when they call the police, the response is not there. Um, the overwhelming amount of call that we have in the police department, they never get to downtown. And they go in through this day by day. I, I, and I, I do believe that this improvement district, they have the ability to shift some of the funding for security, it could be a private security. I'll, I will leave that to the administration or to the director. I don't know how can we do it, but I'm looking, I would like to entertain that conversation. But something had to be done, and you was here, director, when some of the public, the speaker came into the mic and spoke about the condition with the amount of drug addict and homeless that we have in the downtown, harassing business owner, asking for money, asking for the business owner to allow them to use the bathroom, and if they don't allow those individuals, imagine you what happened. So when the business owner called the police, they never get there. So, so that's the point that I would like to know. How can this sit address or at least help that area on that matter? That's my only concern right now. Point of order, Council, Council President. Council Pre Yes. Are we entertaining discussion from the public without me no, adjusting no, at the microphone? No, I thought you had to put it. No, Councilman Mendez just finished, Council President. Councilman Mendez just finished. Can we go to roll call on the table? No, yeah, I did request no, no, Councilman, the floor. Councilman Jackson has the floor. Roll call, no. roll call. Roll call on the table. We already finished the discussion. Ca the Councilman Velez. Yes. Listen. <laughs> so this is my last meeting as president. Yeah. He's, he asked for the floor, I gave him the floor. Could you just have a little decorum in here, please, and stop screaming, let's do, you know, just cut it out, please. Let's be nice today. Yeah. <laughs> Councilman Jackson, you have the floor. I appreciate it. So, listen, I mean, first of all, I mean, I, I do, I would appreciate the slightest level of respect as the first ward council person, as a business, a, a long time business owner, that's, in, that's invested a great deal of money into the city and understanding the flow of what, you know, what that means. And when I'm addressing, in fact, Councilman Mendez had an opportunity to meet for the first time a business owner in my ward at your event the other day, a woman who uh, is not an owner per se, but she pays a triple net rent. So therefore, she is paying the, ta the taxes associated with um, with the SID and with other things that we're, we're, we're that we're that, that we're enforcing, but if I'm hearing cries from these members in this in, in this in this area, and I'm asking for the director to provide that information, and the director is telling me no, that he refuses to provide me with that information.
Come on. Uh, wait Di a minute. Wait you, a minute. Hold now, on. Council uh, President, you be, you I, be, I ask you definitely allow him to come to the microphone no, 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 and calling me a liar. You, no, no, hold on a minute. That's totally so, out of context. Director, you're not totally helping, out of context, you're not, totally you're not helping the cause. You're not helping the cause right now. It's not just that. He, he, didn't, he didn't ask you. He's entitled to speak his mind, right? Correct. When we call you up, if we call you up for questioning, then you speak. Correct. You can't control what, you know, what, what all of us say. Continue, Councilman Jackson. Very good. Thank you, Council President. So once again, I mean, I'm not sure what the director's blurting about lying, but I requested specific information. It was not granted. And some of the information that, was, that I requested was given to me this afternoon. I mean, it should have been gave, given to me Friday of last week as, as we continuously do. But, you know, listen, I'm not going to labor this out. It, I, I understand um, pretty much how this is going to flow. Council President, you can, we, can, we can proceed as, as you see fit. Roll call. It's not a problem. Roll call, Council President. Yes, Mr. President. Um, did we send the request to the Council 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 you don't say nothing. If I have to table an item, I have to have a date, or if it's indefinitely, can you just add uh, You can me? put it for the next meeting. Madam I Clark. have a proposed date for July 20th. Can I just put that on the record? If well, you okay. know what? Let's do it indefinitely, because that way we could put it in workshop for, you know, to get any okay. clarification. Okay. If it passes. Okay. So may I All continue? Right? Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. We're Roll. not tabling. We're voting That's to cool. table. So yes. if we Roll. vote, otherwise it's not going to be table. Could we vote? Roll call, Madam Clerk. Roll call to table item number five, indefinitely. Councilman Abdelaziz, the table. No. <laughs> Councilwoman Khan. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I have visited many cities, and one of the ones that I really like is the Ironbound section in Newark. Um, and they're million dollar budgets. Also, with that downtown city in Ironbound, they have a, a, a nonprofit <coughs> corporation that helps with their buildings and help with affordable housing, and they do all of that. I've gone to conventions with some of the Ironbound SID, and I can see what SID can do when they do what they need to do. The other biggest SID is Times Square. It's a SID. The city of New York ain't taking care of Times Square. No businesses are taking care of Times Square. So I can see the, the value if you get the right momentum going, the right people, um, with that being said, I, I, I've looked up SIDS because of my one in Arabelle section, my Bucker Hill section, SID, and I go to their meetings and, and I see the involvement that they do, and I see the, the businesses that are, are part of the SID and, and, and how they are engaging and, and actually what's going on uh, in their SID. Um, Madam Clerk, my vote is no. Okay, Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, so if you see these seats and you see how they function and you see that it's distinctly different from the way that the one that we have is functioning, you see that the area is atrocious, that it's absolutely horrendous, and yet we still continue to approve these things over and over again. I mean, listen, you can only beat a dead horse for so much. I get the horse is dead to begin with. My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Yes, the table. Uh, Councilman Kalik. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I see the mirror image of last year's um, budget, and which we have approved. So I don't think there is no reason for delaying approving uh, of this uh, budget, which the seed has already approved. Mm -hmm. So I think we should just uh, you know, vote on it. To table it, my vote is done. Thank you. Councilman Mendez. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk, for my vote. Definitely no try to support Councilman Jackson on his question about getting the information. But at the same time, uh, my personal uh, problem with the downtown area, and I'm going to continue advocating for this um, situation, and I know the VA is not here, uh, but ultimately the administration, they are responsible to find a solution for what's going on with the downtown. I'm getting calls almost every other day, every day, from business owners in downtown, because when they call the police and by for being harassed by uh, drug addict and homeless, they don't get the response. And I don't blame, uh, you know, we all know 
how many shootings. We're getting shootings every day. And we got the police department, you know, with an incredible amount of calls. And I do believe that this seat, it could definitely bring a relief to that section. If we change the structure of the budget, I hear what the director say that uh, it's too late now because the budget is already allocated. But my, uh, you know, uh, is I'm going to continue, uh, uh, you know, bringing the point back into the administration. Uh, you know, so for now, we're going to allow this to go ahead and, and just uh, get the vote uh, and reading the, uh, the budget by title only. So it's not to table. Let's move forward. The vote is not Councilman. Councilman Mims? So I, I don't want to elongate it. <laughs> I mean, even to the point that we're at a place of tabling when the director has done his due diligence, went above and beyond, made sure he had all the information that's been asked in years past, came in, collaborated with DPW, the administration, to ensure the work gets done. Every morning that when they go down there, the vagrants are there. They're there with their mattresses, their tents, Every morning it is cleaned. What happens after it's cleaned up is not to their purview, it is to the individuals that are causing the debris and the trash. But every single day it is done. I see them, six in the morning, seven in the morning. I see DPW, I see the CDS workers, and that's a collaborative effort that is done. At night, I see, when, even when we leave here, you drive around, the vagrants are ripping the trash open after yeah. they've been compiled and put together it nice and neatly. They go through the trash because they look for items to sleep on and, and to eat from and so, so many different things and it's definitely a concern. But to hold uh, the city responsible for that, that that's just, it's, it's, it's just not right to do it. So this is an introduced budget. We are not the entity that provides your oversight. You have a board of directors that does it. They have voted unanimously. The vote, the budget this year is similar to last year and we approved it. I don't see why there will be any other difference in this year. Thank you for, I'll say it once again on the record, I said it last week and again this week. You've done your due diligence um, and you've done a great job at it. So I am definitely not gonna table this. This deserves to be voted on tonight. My vote is no, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilman Villas. You know, since I created, um, since I created not just to get the money from the members and, and, and put it as a tax situation to, to spend a budget. It was created for the purpose that sometimes some administration do not fulfill the job to maintain areas. And they put this together to make sure they get the service that they need with this, with this sit. You know, Councilman Mendez alluded that uh, squatters, the panhandler, the uh, abusing of uh, a lot of things in downtown. But listen, this, that's not the problem with the city. That's responsibility of the police department to address quality of life, traffic matters, and, and so on and so on. You know, the taxpayers on downtown is paying their share to get the service. Thanks God they are want, willing to qualify. And I believe in the members, and I believe on the board that are representing those members. So if they voted for it, I had to be the supporter of their message to us through the clerk, through the collection of the taxes, or the contribution to get the service to them. One of the things I gotta say is, and we have to keep in mind that downtown is not only a commercial district, is turning into a residential district too. If you look at your surrounding areas, they are also residentials in the city of Patterson, in the, in the downtown district. And they are voters not only in the city, they're also voters when they have to call to the polls. So respecting that, you know, respecting that, um, no to take. Councilman. Oh, I got, don't tell me you was going through. You already voted. You Thank you, Councilman. Councilman, <laughs> what is your vote? Oh, he want to hear it, though. I didn't get a vote. Yeah. So I got two more minutes? No, you're just kidding. My vote is no. So table. You're voting no. That's right. Mr. President? No. No to table. Roll call. 
So we have no. We have um, let me see. One absent. One absent. And two yeses. Oh yeah. Um, one yes, I'm sorry. Watch this. So one. So just one person in favor, six against, and one absent. No, I'm missing one person. No, it'll be seven against. I'm missing Councilwoman Davila. So it's seven, seven. In fa seven against, one in favor, and mm -hmm. one absent. The tabling for item number five <laughs> failed. Count, uh, Madam, roll we roll have a motion to, Ma Madam Clerk, roll. Roll. Yes, sir. I just want to write this down. So okay. seven people voted. Not to table. No. No. So we have eight people, so the motion is second. Oh, wow. Okay. Thank you. Wow. Only one person in favor and then one person yeah. is absent. Okay. <laughs> Mr. President, so the tabling of item number five failed. Do we have a motion to vote on this item, Madam? Move. Clark? Second. So we had a motion and a second on the Move. Floor. Move. Before. We have it already. We had a we motion already. We already have a motion and a second. So roll, roll call, Madam Clerk. Okay. Roll, roll call an, um, an item number five to approve the introduced budget for CID. Councilman Abdelaziz. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So, Director, I've seen your work. You're a six ward resident. I partner up with you to discuss how I can improve my business districts. I don't have a SID, and you always hear things about the six ward all the time. We get things done, we, we bring results to the area. I can only imagine if you partner up with the stakeholders in that, in that ward. Um, keep up the great work. I'm proud that there's a Pattersonian leading the way. You are Pattersonian. Yeah. It's not moving. There's six ward proud. We, we stay in the six ward. But keep up the good work. You have my support. I look forward to work with you to see the ideas that you're using in the downtown areas that I could use on 21st Ave, Farmer's Market in South Patterson. Uh, SID's work. SID's work. Um, I heard Councilman McCann say the Ironbound. Right? You go over there. We can make it happen, but we can't keep fighting. And if, th if there was a sit of my ward, believe me, I will be meeting with them weekly to make sure that we, pro we provide results to that area. So keep up the great work. My vote is yes. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Cotton. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. As I had stated before, uh, and if you've ever gone to the Ironbound section, um, I mean, the house are really condensed. Uh, how you, you very rarely see alleyways because they're they're all connected together. Um, so I can see the value of it. I think that sometimes you have to try to get more people engaged to um, kind of like understand the importance of um, doing, doing the work that uh, it did. Because if you remember 30 years ago, Times Square was a mess. Nobody was going to Times Square. So they knew that they had to figure out how to do something to make people want to come there. They figured it out, the businesses I'm saying, to make it to make it happen. And I think once you can get the engagement of the people too, it, it would be it would be something good downtown for our city. I know it will be. Uh, you always gotta think on the positive. Uh, can't think on the negative, constantly negative. You can't if something's gonna get better. And sometimes it starts at the top. So you gotta be that leader to make it get better to what it needs to get and understand. And I see you walking downtown. I see you walking in and out. I see you going in the store. So with that being said, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Madam Clerk. See, one thing I guess many people don't understand about me is that I don't know where it comes from. Maybe it comes from early childhood, my parents, what have you. But I don't need to run with a crowd to be able to feel like I'm doing something correct. So voting one against and eight in favor is not something that I'm not accustomed to. I could sit here for hours and list items that I've been one against and eight in favor of. of. I don't want to start going here. but. No one can challenge me on any of those items whether or not I was right or wrong, because I was never wrong on any of those items, as I'm not here. We talk about the people have voted unanimously. How do you know, Councilwoman Mims? 
You weren't given the, vote, the voting uh, layout. The director has refused to present that to us. The people who I've spoken to, the numerous businesses, people who do own buildings there, they're not satisfied with, with the work of the CID. The CID is much different than the CID that's being ran over at, uh, on, um, at the Bunker Hill area. But hey, listen, I, I take no qualm at it. I, I come here, do the best that I possibly can, try to hold people accountable. You know, I get it. There's a lot of politic politics going on, political appointments, people getting new jobs, people being told how to move and things of that nature. And I have no issue with that. But to say that this area is doing well, it's worse now than it was under the previous director. The area is absolutely horrendous. I tell you what I'm gonna do. Now I'm gonna have to go to work. I'm gonna go do the further due diligence. I'll speak to each and every owner personally. I'll make sure, because most of the majority of these owners in this area, they live in, they, they're not from here. A lot of these buildings are owned by absentee landlords that live in the city. And I'll, I'll wrap here, Council President. And then I'm gonna create a video. I'm gonna create a video of the condition of the city. And I'm gonna make sure that I, that I, that I post you on it, and I'm, I'm, I'll probably include you in it, Councilman, your commentary on how you would like for this Sid to be in the sixth ward. The same ward that gets preferential treatment during snow removal time, the same ward that has the mayor taking detectives off of the police department and putting them into the sixth ward to do investigations when someone's car is broken into while I have people being beat under the trestle while I have gunshot victims in the first ward. The same ward that has the mayor doing personal appearances alongside of the councilman of the sixth, oh, I'm sorry, the mayor of the sixth ward as they're getting preferential treatment, much different than my ward gets, but I will rest it there. Listen, I mean, I don't, I've been jumped before by, literally by multiple people. I can continue to stand and hold my own this is nothing, I can sit here and feel comfortable with voting correctly. I'm not doing it with an agenda. I have no, nothing personal against the director. This thing, this issue I've had with this Sid was predates the, 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 uh, the, the director. But it's being poorly ran in oversight with the, anyway. I, I apologize, Council President. My vote is no, Madam Clerk. Councilman Kalik. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I haven't seen any member of the seat come in front of the podium and complain about their budget. They're the one who putting the money in their budget. They should be up here complaining. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're like, I guess they're like the way it is in the downtown area. So let them live with it. <laughs> That's my thing. You know, my council colleague, you guys have uh, different opinion about it. So it is their money. No, they like the way it's being run. Why should I go against it? My vote is yes. You said yes, Councilman? Okay, thank you. Councilman Mendez? <laughs> Councilman Mendez? Thank you, Madam Clerk, thank you. I think, you know, in my case, I'm all about solution. And the reason why, the reason why I'm saying that I'm all about solution is because the director and director, you hear my concern when you came at the last meeting, and then somehow, and I know you agree with me on that. When it comes to, and nobody could, if you go to downtown, don't tell me that you don't see the drug addict, you don't see homeless, you don't see dude in the broad daylight. And I know you agree with me on that. I had a conversation with Madam B. A. I see the budget, the total budget that you have is three hundred fifteen thousand dollars for the city commercial district service LLC take. $200,000 out, out of the budget, landscaping $14,500, marketing $13,500, rent $19,000, um, the, the, your salary $60,000, and work uh, compensation $7,800. My recommendation to you is on the next budget. If you look what happened with the uh, improvement district, Bunker Hill Improvement District, 
70% of the salary go in, into security to make sure that the area is safe. I think that in downtown, if you on the next board, if you work in to incorporate some, uh, it could be a private company, bringing safety into downtown is going to help local business a lot. You know, when you have a sense of safety, you go to downtown, you use the restaurant, you use the store that we have around, and that's what we want. We want more people to open business in downtown. And now I, I know what I'm saying, and it's based on what I see. And I'm just giving you that information, hoping that you, on the next budget, you go back with the business owner and say, listen, let's, let's do something different. Maybe we have a private company who's going to be in charge of this section, having books on the ground, making sure that people feel safe. And that's definitely going to help the city, uh, especially the police department. So that's my request to you and to the administration um, on the next budget. So, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you, Thank Councilman. You, Clerk. Councilman Mims? So, Director, I, let me apologize that you had to sit through all of this on tonight. Your budget is very clear cut, it is synonymous to last year. You've got, I'll say it again, you've gone above and beyond providing all the information <clears throat> as you have done in, in the years past. But one of the things I want to commend when you came in, um, there are so many things that I can talk about, some of the things you've done. When you came in, you were, they were scraping all of the flyers and posters off of the poles, painting the poles, hiring CDS, <clears throat> doing a best model practice from Newark, bringing CDS into Patterson because of the great work they did there, and they've been doing it in, in the city of Patterson. Partnering with DPW, sitting with the administration, sitting and having conversations with council members to identify what are some other things that you can work on. When uh, Councilman Jackson said, well, Mims, how do you know the majority? I, I frequent the first ward. The first ward is very happy with the work that you're doing because I talk to them all the time. They're very happy about the work you're doing. They're happy about the services that are provided. As, as we all know, there is work to be done, but it's not because of what you're not doing. It's because there's a need of enforcement. There's also, Councilwoman Cotton talked about it before, we are the county seat for social services concerns, and we know that there is a need for an exit strategy for a lot of the people that come into our community for their different treatments, and we need to develop a plan for that. But that has nothing to do with the work and what is before us. We are not the oversight for, for your organization. We're just approving the, the budget, the title of the budget, so that they can send out bills so you can get paid. That's, that's all we're doing. The oversight comes from your board of directors. And some of them own more shares than others. That's why they have more votes. This is why I understand it, because you've been here for a couple years, and I've read all of your documentation. And when they vote, based on the amount of what they owe the profit share, they have more vote. And I know the highest voter that's on there. And I, I'm just so grateful for when things come before us that they are very, very well organized, that you've done your due diligence. I'm not saying it's not even personal. I've watched you do your job. And when someone do, does their job the way you do your job, you should be recognized, you should be rewarded, and we should say congratulations to you for um, being a Pattersonian. And we've been fighting for that. People from Patterson don't get jobs here. You are a Pattersonian that is here in the city working to better the community, and I commend you for that. So for me, I apologize that you had to wait through this entire process for something that should not have been elongated. My vote is absolutely yes. Keep up the great work, and congratulations on your well-deserved promotion. Thank you. Councilman Villain. Well, I'm not going to pro prolong it too much, but you know, I have to correct. <clears throat> Some council members in the beginning, there was a good statement saying that you are a sixth ward resident. I'm happy that you came out of the fifth ward and your family still live in the fifth ward. You heard that, Councilman Malaziz? You only got you got only one person from the sixth fifth ward to move to the sixth. I got the whole family in the fifth, so that's a good thing. But in a serious note, you know you have a 113 year old sit. In the city of Pat, um, Ch sorry, um, Chambers, right? Chambers, yes. A 113 years, and 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 this is a progressive. If you if you didn't have a qualification to uh, to be there, they wouldn't even they would look at you. You know, congratulations in that position as president, 
you know, and I know you're going to do good for them. And, and, and beside this, the sit, you know, I see it. I have breakfast every morning in the, in the first ward. I go up and down the fifth ward because, as they say, I go through all the wards because the fifth ward is in the middle. It's the heart of Patterson. We had a conversation to extend your sit, sit to the area of Main Street between Grand Street and 20th Avenue because they are 21st Avenue because they are a lot of business here. And we could get benefit out of the, out of the work that they've been doing. And you know what? Commend those employees that you have cleaning the streets because they're so courteous. They, they, they say good afternoon, good morning, and they recognize who are the council members because they direct us as a good afternoon council member, good afternoon council member Velez, and, and, and so on, council Mins and Sarah, Sarah. So I will respect the decisions of the members of the city and also I respect the hard work that your board members do in the city of Patterson regarding the downtown district. So saying that I have to brace where I live and that where I live is the city of Patterson. If you wanna talk about 42nd Street in New York, I was raised in the Bronx, so I know how the people of the Bronx used to conduct themselves in that time. I was a nice kid in, in school and college and all that stuff. But listen, this brace I was sitting. Miss Harrison wanna go home, we wanna go home. So saying that, my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman. Mr. Um, Mr. President. Real quick. Not all the cities have the same, you know, needs. So you gotta look at the area. You cannot be comparing one city with the other. We have a budget here, it's $315,000. 200 of that, of that is going to, for maintenance. Another 14 for landscaping, another 13 for maintenance. Um, you have a council colleague here say you need security. So what is he, is he suggesting that you increase <laughs> you increase the, 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 the taxes to, the, to this, uh, you know what, I'll leave, I'll leave that one like that. I'm not gonna entertain that comment again. Um, listen, this sit was created by, by, by this body over 20 years ago. I'm sure you have independent auditors that review all the pro procedures. I think they, they might even look in, into uh, the election process, maybe. So yes, you're gonna have some of the business owners that are against it. Um, I think last time you said it, 60, 70 percent uh, was the, in favor of the SID by the business owners. So if we do a survey right now on any of us, except the councilman from the sixth ward, he does, does a, such a great job. I heard one of my council colleagues just, you know, say so many great things about what's going on in his ward. Um, and, and actually his, his priority was really high. What was the number you had? 99%. So he had 99 percent of the votes. So he was he ran an opposed Ca councilwoman. So you go out there and you ask about any of us, we'll we'll be happy if we get seventy percent of the people to say that we're doing a great job. So that being said, um, continue the, the the good work. I'm sure you know we have a lot of work to do in the in the downtown area, but it could always be worse, right? You have made it better, um, and that's all I could say about this. My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. President. The vote is seven in favor. Seven in favor, one against, one absent. Item number five is hereby approved. Public Move hearing. And Move to close. No, we I, have a number four. Have, to I, I have to finish this. Oh, we have a oh. Okay. This um, item number five is approved. Public hearing and adoption of the seed budget will be held at a regular meeting of July 2020, 2021 at 7 p.m. So we have item number four, Mr. President, for first reading that was not take action uh, on that yet. So move. Um, may I continue with item number four, Mr. President? Sure. It's for first reading, no public hearing is required. It's an ordinance vacating an easement at 361-367 Market Street in the city of Patterson, Passaic County, New Jersey, Department of Public Works. Do we have a motion? Moved by Councilwoman Cotton. Second. Moved by Councilwoman Cotton, second by Councilman Abdelaziz. Abdelaziz. Roll call. You want a discussion? Okay. You want to ask your question, uh, Councilman Cotton? Thank you. Council, can you please um, 
I know what I've gone through a couple few years back sure. when when some a business wanted to easement or something, mm -hmm. um, and council members said, "Well, are they going to increase the taxes for whatever they got?" So, oh. it's, okay, can you explain? Please explain. Sure. Just um, I, I think I understand what the inquiry okay. is, and, and again, uh, Mr. Council President, if I may, uh, good evening, Councilwoman. The uh, in this particular um, easement is actually a sewer easement. Mm -hmm. So it's a utilities easement that state law permits uh, municipal government to maintain. It's been determined by our own engineering, by our own city officials, that we don't need this sewer easement. It must have been one that was put in place who knows how long ago, especially at that address. Uh, that must be a very old uh, sewer easement. Therefore, the building owner who wants to build there, I don't know exactly know what but they want to build. They know that that's a hard proposition if there's an easement. The city has agreed to that it doesn't need it. Now it needs your approval to vacate it. How will that impact taxes? Well, presumably, this will now clear the way for a bigger, better, whatever construction. And there will be an assessment that will reflect that. I, I have to think that there's already taxes being paid on this property. That assessment reflects the fact that there's a sewer easement. By removing it, the new assessment will then also reflect a better rateable. Good. Council President. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Council President. Council Member Les. Uh, I don't know if I'm mistaken, but the ordinance say vacating an easement at 361, 367 Market Street, but if you look at the, uh, at the body, it's all containing on the uh, Marshall Street, it's talking about Mill Street, it's talking about Marshall Street again. I don't know if, if, if this belongs to the title. Do you see the, the body of it? Yeah, the, I think there's a meets and bounds that describes the area of the easement, yes. But, but this is a Market Street, 361, 367. This is between Summer Street and um, and Carroll, how it is mentioned in the other side of the of the fifth ward? I, I don't know. Uh, so I know. So move to table, please. Because it, it's it's Second. there's a problem here. Second. Yeah. I know my work pretty good. Now you mentioned the owner. I would like to All talk right. to the owner. So, so council council tell me, you have a motion you to take second. Table. Yeah. And we have a second. Yes. Second by yeah. Councilman Delisis. Madam Clerk, roll call to table this item. Uh, motion by Councilman Velez and second by Abdelaziz. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Roll call to, is this indefinite? Table indefinitely, yes. Roll call to table item number four indefinitely. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Council Councilwoman Khan to table. Yes. That's right. So she don't. Okay. She don't understand. What I'm talking. All right. Go ahead, Council President. We, we, um, we have a motion to table, Madam Clerk. Yes. So, oh. Council members. I'm in roll call. You said yes, no. Okay. Local. The next person is Councilman Mendez for the tabling. Or to table? To table yes. item number four. Yes. Sir. Uh, if the councilman call, he might have a reason. Yes to table. Councilman Mims. Uh, the councilman of the fifth ward has some concerns with the area, so I'm going to follow um, his recommendation. My vote is yes to table. Um, councilman Velez. Just to give a little bit of history, if you go to Market Street, in front of Roberto Clemente, is a general store. There was a supermarket there. If you see that entrance that go behind it, it's an L entrance. They be using that for drug addiction. They be have is is abandoned. Now that corporate council mentioned that the owners plan to move forward to construction, let's start cleaning the area and closing those gates. The quality of life issues there is awful. So, moving forward. The body of the resolution do not represent the title. That's why I'm tabled indefinitely. Thank you. My vote is yes. Okay, Councilman Velez, yes. 
Um, Councilwoman Davila and Councilman Jackson, we have tabling abstain. item number, okay. Councilman Jackson said abstain. Councilman Davila? <laughs> I I'm sorry, Madam Clerk. <laughs> We're tabling item number four. Item number four reads, Resol I'm sorry, ordinance vacating an easement at 361-367 Market Street in the city of Patterson, Passaic County, New Jersey, Department of Public Works. And this is to table it? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes. Councilman um, Davila said yes. Um, Mr. President? Yes. Okay, the vote is six in favor, one against, one abstain, one absent. Item number four is tabled indefinitely. Move to close. Second. second. Motion to close by Councilman of Delacy, second by Councilman um, Velez. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call to close the regular meeting of July, I'm sorry, June 22nd, 2021. Councilman Abdelaziz. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Close so, Council you. President, in your last meeting, you are getting <laughs> it done and complete by 11 o'clock, at least for me, because I vote first. And then I don't know what time you're going to vote, but I want to commend you for a year that you led this council. I know it's been tough. I know I could be a pain once in a while, but dealing with eight other individuals on this council is a tough task. I do not envy any person that wants to sit on the council presidency seat. It's very easy to criticize, but sit with us in a room one day and you'll see how difficult it is after 35 seconds. Um, so, council president, great job. I think you led a lot of initiatives and you've done a lot of, un made unpopular choices but it was what's right for the city. To my council colleague from the first ward, thank you for showing how much of a fighter I am for the sixth ward. And I will continue fighting for the sixth ward, but Madam BA, things are not perfect in the sixth ward. We got a lot of work to do. To my residents, I've received a lot of your complaints. I need to set up a meeting with the BA to discuss some of the, the issues that we're seeing in certain areas in the People's Park and Lakeview and South Patterson areas. But as the councilman says, he's gonna use my words for a video. I am going to use your words for my re-election video of how great we do in the six wards. And thank you, Councilman. Everyone have a good night. Congratulations to all the graduates from, from the sixth ward and throughout the city. I hope to see many of you at the graduation. I know things will be a little different, but this is a good time to celebrate. Um, and to our high school seniors, congratulations. And to the, finally, um, please be on the lookout for our six ward movie nights. We stopped them um, last year because of COVID. We're looking to bring them back. Six ward movie nights in the summer. And Councilwoman Khan already told me that she'll be joining us for some of the movies in the park. So my vote is yes. Good night. Thank you, Councilwoman Khan. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I just want to say to um, uh, my Council Cogley, Council President Flavio Rivera, Indeed, one thing I can say about him, we can disagree, but at least you don't stay mad. <laughs> That's one thing I can say about you. You know, we vote differently, but you still like, you know, you're okay. And um, I'm just um, want to say that, uh, what, what is, why, why, is, why, why everything is so funny now? Tell me why. You know, people were complaining about people talking while other people were talking. What, what's wrong? What's wrong with everybody? Tell me. I just want to say it was a pleasure sitting here. Um, one thing I got to say that committees are key things in helping the city run. And if you've got to have committee meetings in order to get things accomplished. Also, I want to say that um, on Thursday, uh, I got a couple calls about Barber Park. We're going to be starting occupying Barber Park again like we did in the past. Um, as I stated before, it was a lot of work that had to go into that, but we have an, an organization called Occupying Barber Park Association. So if you're doing, not doing anything on Thursday, 
Um, please stop at Barbara Park on Fear Street behind St. Luke's Baptist Church. Also, I just want to say too that um, uh, I'm having a crime prevention uh, meeting two on Thursday. I'm going to put the link on my Facebook page uh, and try to get it out as much as I can. Uh, th there's certain things that we can talk about. The family, the gentlemen that came from Warren Street, uh, I'm going to make sure I send that because there's certain issues. Uh, I get texts all the time of different things that are going on. Um, I can say, and let me just say, I always say let's highlight our children. And um, I do my best to, to stay on the positive note. I have said it over and over many times before. You're not taking my good spirit because my community needs somebody with a good spirit. They need to hear cut kindness. They need to hear good words. They need to hear that because life is too short right now for all, for everything that's happened to all of us. And once again, to Miracle Duncan, my condolences to you. You were doing my prayer tonight, but your mom passed, and I just want to give my condolences to you. You're an outstanding young lady. You're a product of the Fourth War, and there's so many good things, so many good children that have come out the Fourth War with everything they done talked about, but we have some good young adults that have come out of that war. So with that being said, everyone out there, look for my Facebook stuff. Uh, look for Crime Prevention to Environmental Design. Uh, uh, we're going to start a wall called Shame on Me, and we're going to start highlighting some Absolutely. of these houses that are very yeah. shameful uh, and let people know about them. With that being said, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilwoman Davila. So I'd like to start uh, by giving my condolences before I close to Monsoor for the loss of his sister earlier today and to Mr. Taj Udin, who has lost um, his mother-in-law. Um, to Council President, if I could say this, I've known you for over 10 years prior to you even being elected. And um, there's definitely been some good times, some medium times, and maybe a little bad times. But at the end of the day, I agree with Councilwoman Cotton on something. You are the type of person when it comes to city matters, okay? It's about business. Once business is done, next. So that is something that has to be said. Um, you've had a difficult task this past year. You have purely, although in my council presidency is when the pandemic started, you were in full force when you became um, the council president. And um, holding those virtual meetings was definitely a difficult task. And uh, like my colleague, Councilman Abdelaziz said, only when you're on this side and you have to see and what you deal with, with every individual on this council, then you will truly understand. Uh, at the end of the day, it is true. You can agree to disagree. Um, it's interesting though, Councilwoman Cotton made a statement about council president doesn't stay mad after business. But there's clearly some council members that still mentioned things that happened years ago. And so sometimes I say to myself, have you forgiven? But with that said, I just wanna say that um, it's been great. I also want to, um, Council President, congratulate you on the new addition to your family. Um, she is all you. I mean, clearly all daddy, all right? And so blessings to her and to your wife and obviously to, to your two older children. Um, wishing you the best in your new job. I think you are by far one of the most qualified individuals that has been given a task, and I look forward to continuing working on this council with you. Madam Clerk, my vote is yes to close. Thank you. Councilman Jackson? To close. close. <laughs> I guess I'll be the entertainment for the night, Madam Clerk. First of all, let me congratulate Councilman um, um, Rivera on the new addition to the family. Family's the first, never, um, ever, will I go out on a limb and state the negative and from that perspective. But um, congrats, brother. Thanks. Wishing you all the best from fatherhood. Um, but with that being said, I I'm a, I, hey, if there's anybody gonna give you the factual truth, the real, non-political perspective is going to come from me. He's been by far, in my experience, the worst, worst council president 
I've ever seen hold a seat. The first council president ever to eject a council member out of a meeting. That was virtual. That was virtual. I know Councilwoman Mims followed you up. No, you said it was two. I ejected two people, and I just one. Well, I said, said the first, why are you, point of order, Council sorry, President, I apologize. Apologize. maintain some decorum <laughs> that he's enforced on everyone, but yet he's violated the whole decorum process the whole time. The main people that we're here to support and represent, he stifled their representation by limiting them their speech and not allowing the, council the councilman as well as the administration to uh, to answer any of their concerns. He's partnered with various council members to do certain things. Let's talk about the Marshall Street Park. You know, when we have young ladies, we have maybe 80 to 100 young girls at Commons Field. I can name one in particular that stands out. She's a young lady who was being heavily recruited by Division I schools across the country. She broke her leg on home plate, slide at home, and yet we neglected to fix that over parks that were more advantageous to, to adults. That was, that was a very surprising one, as the councilman played as a youngster here as well. Still, that park is being denied a bit the ability to, re, to re, uh, redo it. That was very disappointing. As the chair, as the chair of finance, you removed the line item to, to, to get rid of uh, our former CFO, then it's the budget officer, which, is, which was a very underhanded move. And I'm going to need a little bit more time, Madam Clerk. <laughs> the truth is sometimes it's painful, but it has to be said. Wait, wait, wait. You're asking Madam so, Clerk for time? I'm not asking for time. I'm, I'm claiming my time, as Maxine Waters has done, and as Councilwoman <laughs> Mims has often expressed. But I'll only claim a couple minutes. I won't be too long. But I'll wait for your commentary, unlike the councilman of the, of the six. Nor did I give him any accolades. What I did was, you know, people take, you know, unnecessary credit for taking resources from the rest of the community to, to you know, to, to selfishly focus on their own concerns. But I'll allow that to be. And Councilman, I really didn't want to go there, but people drawing me in. You know, I want to congratulate you as well for managing to maneuver yourself into a new position for it to see increase. So while you're la lavishing on the salary combined, I'm almost $200,000, I can't help but look at some of the harsh decisions and the harsh commentary that you pointed at those members of DPW, often who've come here to this microphone to complain about them only being able to, to, to achieve a lifelong, a 30-year sentence of making less than $30,000. But listen, nothing personal. It's just my, 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 my perspective, my viewpoint, my observation. And, and everyone knows if there's anyone here who's not politically inclined to be involved with something just on the basis of politics is me. I'm going to give it to you straight, true, and how it is. We're not even going to go into you know, some of the other stuff. But uh, on that note, Madam Clerk, I know I've gone way over the line. And I don't want you to be here too much longer. So uh, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Mendez, your turn. I wasn't too bad. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, definitely before my, before my vote, let me just uh, definitely take this time to congratulate Council President, you know, for his, his leadership and, 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 and definitely his work and dedication on that position as a president of this council and also uh, let me congratulate him for his newborn baby. Thank uh, you, thank you. Uh, you know, you're a great, uh, you're a great man, you know, dedicated to your family. My father called him Big Head, El Cacuito. That's what my father called him. But, you know, you're definitely a great man, dedicated, dedicated to the community. So, uh, you know, that's, you know, uh, uh, of the love that he has for, you know, Councilman Rivera. But, uh, you know, so definitely congratulations. And, and to all the third war resident, I really want to take this time to thank you all for all the text. Every time there is a problem in the third war, I get the text, I get the picture. Uh, the director and some of the directors, I'm on top of them because of each and every one of your texts, your phone calls. I really want to encourage you to con just continue doing that, holding me accountable for this position. I'm not going to stop. A lot of the phone calls, some of the phone calls that I get, they're not from the third war, but I get it and I receive it with all the love. And then I pass the information, I push to resolve the problem. Uh, let me also inform 
all the third world uh, residents that our next town hall meeting is going to be done the second week of July. Our first town hall meeting was incredible. We got a lot of good ideas on the table, so we're going to continue uh, with our second one, and we're expecting to have an in-person town hall meeting. Um, so we're going to give the information in the, in, um, this in the next couple of days. That way you could all, you know, get the time uh, ready uh, just to have this conversation with your councilman and some member of the administration uh, to hear the, the response. Um, you know, direct, uh, Madam B.A., um, you know, I'm definitely going to continue advocating for uh, what has been going on in the third war and in the entire city with loud music that the, the police department have the data at the same, at the same location. We're getting the phone call from the same location every single week. Let's get those data and let's get the quality of life units on top of those locations because personally myself, I'm getting those phone calls every week. Uh, also, uh, police uh, presence in the east side, in east side Park, um, Madam B.A., and also in all the Route 20 corridor. That's a hot spot for people to get into the city, do all the illegal activity and transaction and get back into the highway. We need more police presence on that area. And let's continue to pray for our city because what has been going on with the city with all the shooting, it's just all unacceptable. Um, I already mentioned on the closing of public portion about, you know, the condition of the city, the amount of drug addicts and homeless that we have in the city. It's time for us to start holding those institutions that we have in the city of Patterson accountable for the job that they're supposed to do. I passed by in front of one of them and I saw three, three people like passing out in front and I'm like, listen, that's their program. They should be responsible for that. And that's a conversation and that's the administration's responsibility to follow up with those institutions because they've been making a lot of money you know, with those programs. But the problem, they live in the problem up to us in Patterson. Um, with that being said, my vote is yes, Patterson. God bless you and good night. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Mims? Yes, so First of all, I want to say happy birthday to Councilman Cotton. As people call us Laverne and Shirley, I added a new name, Oprah and Gail. So happy birthday, Councilman Cotton. Also, um, last week, I did congratulate council president on the birth of his new baby girl um, to let everyone know why you were not present because of the amazing um, bundle of joy that has been added to your family. Um, I want to say this last year has been such a pleasure to work alongside of you in the role of president as your vice president. I learned a lot working with you. A lot got done despite some of the commentary, a lot of things got done. We challenged the administration, held them accountable, but really got a lot of stuff done. When you look back over the track record of this past year, you will find that there were a lot of stuff that got accomplished, despite all of the stuff that we talk about, oh my God, in the community, they look and they watch the meetings. Councilman Jackson, I got the mic. I'm on the mic, one, two. One, two, one, two. I get extra time, Adam Clerk. Um, and so there's a lot of stuff that got done. So I thank you, um, uh, Council President, for your leadership in this past year. I want to congratulate all of our graduates uh, throughout the city of Patterson. Uh, I know you have, it has been really challenging for those that have been virtually learning. Um, as a mom who had to deal with it with my son, it was really a challenge. So my, my um, hat goes off to all of you. I want to um, commend my son and my niece who will be graduating tomorrow. They are high school seniors. They will be graduating on tomorrow from Passaic County Tech. Um, and then I also want to give kudos to my daughter who is, both of them are born and raised Patterson. My daughter is 31 years old. She's achieved straight A's throughout her college career. And on Thursday, she will be defending her doctoral thesis and educational leadership. Her paper was so profound and her grades were so awesome that they accelerated her because of the work that she put in. So I am so looking forward to, to tomorrow, being the commencement speaker first at School 13, seeing my niece and my son graduate at two o'clock, go out to dinner, but on Thursday to sit and see the third generation in my family. My mom holds a doctorate, I hold a doctorate, and now my daughter will be known as Dr. Kennedy, born and raised in Patterson. So I know a lot of times people, they look and say, well, why do you talk about it all the time? You know why? I'm a single mom. 
born and raised in Patterson. I'm super excited. My daughter went to a HBCU college. Now she's, she went to St. Peter's University for her master's and her doctorate. And I'm just super proud as a single mom of four kids to see how they are excelling and the things that they are doing. I'm super proud of that. And I'm never gonna stop bragging on my kids. If you don't brag on yours, then that's on you. Tell me their names, I'll help you brag too. But it's super excited to have kids that are doing things. I'm praying for our community with all the senseless violence that's going on as the summer has just, we went into the summer. Let's keep our community in prayer. Let's pray for this council. Let's pray for the administration. Let's pray for our clerk, our deputy clerk, and our secretaries. And let's keep praying for each other. Thank you so much, Patterson. My vote is yes. Have a great night. Thank you. Councilman Jalez. Councilman, uh, Councilman uh, Large, Flavio Rivera, president of this council. You know, I'm going to miss you. Because you're going to be sitting next to me. Now I got you close. Before I used to walk far away. Before I used to go far away to say something to you. Now I got it close to you. One thing I learned from Councilman uh, um, Flavio is that when it comes up to finance, I could speak to him and he clarified things the way it is. You know, and, um, you know, he has the expertise. I got my own expertise in my own way. And it works because you look at the Fifth Ward. Is the best heart that the city of Pasco will have, and it's beeping. This next Saturday, the 26th, from 11 to 2, we're going to have the first cleanup at the Roberto Clemente Park. I invite the entire community. It's going to be in conjunction with Save the Village, Mr. Ernest Rocker and his group. Uh, hot dogs and hamburgers will be served to those volunteers that are going to be attending. Please arrive before 11 o'clock in the morning and we're gonna take care of Roberto Clemente Park. And last but not least, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you have heard it tonight. Um, if you look at the city four years ago and you compare what we have now, if you are satisfied with the fireworks, if you are satisfied with the loud music, if you are satisfied with the uh, panhandling in the streets, if you are satisfied with a homeless situation, if you are satisfied with lack of a housing, uh, uh, affordable housing, if you are satisfied with the homicides and the ro robberies, if you are satisfied with the cleanliness of the city, I invite you to come to this chambers and express yourself because we are the ears, eyes, and the mouth of the community to the administration. Come down, express yourself. You know, we as a legislator body, we're here to represent you. But the full responsibility, that means I got two more minutes, the full responsibility is from this administration and we have given the tools to address every item that I just mentioned today. Every item. So don't blame the council, don't blame the legislator part, we are here to work with any administration that comes in front of us. And I already say this to the mayor, and I'm going to say it publicly. Don't worry who's going to be council president. Be worried to work with us to move this city forward. Caso cerrado, my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman. Mr. President. So I just want to start off by thanking you, Madam Clerk, for all your support. It really means a lot. Since day one, you've been there, you and your staff. This is the most pleasant staff that you know, I've dealt with in a long time. Very professional. Um, and I want to congratulate you. I know you, ha you have a lot to do with that. Um, and I really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You're welcome, um, Mr. President. Me too. So to the administration, you guys know that with me, it's never personal. Sometimes I do things out of desperation because I love the city. A lot of times, you know, I just want to be able to govern together. And even some people say, oh, Flavio, you're always flip-flopping. No, I, I, I go back home and I don't act based on politics. I, I, I go home and think about, is this positive for the city? How is this going to improve the situation that we have? And a lot of times I pull things off, but it's not that I flip-flop. It's that I continuously, the responsible thing to do is to actually continue to think to make this place better. And every action I've taken as, as council president, um, 
I would not change anything that I have done, to be honest. Um, one of my council colleagues wanted to put me on the record books. They just let the record reflect I had to eject two people because they couldn't keep the decorum. We're the laughing stock of the state. Um, when you go after me, you're not affecting me. I have thick skin. Um, you're affecting actually the, the way the public perceive this council body and the, the partisan government. And I just want to ask, I want to ask my council colleagues, the one that thought that we're doing something positive by acting the way they were acting, not to do this to the next president. Uh, and I hope the next president feels the same way. Don't pay no mind to them. That's why I could laugh. I could talk to them the next day. But the time that I got upset is because of the disrespect to the public, to the residents that elected us to handle city business. Um, in all the years watching council meetings, I've never seen that done. And some of these council members were here before, and they never behaved in this matter. And, and you see it going on during the meeting, shouting from, from different angles. And uh, it's, just, it's just disturbing that, I was going to say professionals behave in, in, in this manner. Uh, you have some people vying for the presidency. This is the same people that cannot main, that keep the decorum in this council. If I, would never, if I would never even think about supporting them, it's not because I have something against them because the way they acted against me. No. It's because if you were not able to follow the rules of this council, then how are you going to lead as president if you can't even follow them as, as just a, a, a regular you know, council member? And now when you sit in this chair, you're going to have to make sure that everyone adheres to those, uh, to those rules. Um, I, I usually learn, every, every time I feel something bad happens to me, I try to find the positive. And I've learned from every one of you, right? I learned from Councilwoman Cotton, you wouldn't hurt a fly, everybody loves you. Councilwoman Mims, uh, everyone. You know, I even learned from, from Councilman Jackson. You know, if, if I ever have to think or teach a class of what not to do as a councilman, I would definitely you know, say that's what you don't do. It's on YouTube, <laughs> by the way. Um, now, sure. Council Madalisis and I have created a club. It's called Get Things Done Club. As a councilman, you, you have to get five votes, right? And you, sometimes you have to assess yourself, and I have in the past, and I go back to the meetings and say, wow, you know, I was a bit, I'm probably going to watch this meeting. I said, I should have never said that about Councilman Jackson. Um, but that's what happens when you write without having a script. And um, just for the sake of the city, Try to work together. Try to get your five votes. If you have something good, instead of fighting with your colleagues because they're not supporting it, your job is to try to get that support from them. You don't get anything accomplished by fighting. If you're only getting one or two votes, then you should look in the mirror and say, you know what, I should have done something differently. I told Madam BA sometimes, right, and I told the director today, he wanted to go and speak. I said, look, you're not helping your cause. Just because one council member have an opinion, let it be. Uh, your goal here is to get things approved. Our goal as, council, as legislators is to pass legislation and to work with the majority of the council. The last thing I'm going to say is the three years that I've been here, I've gotten accomplished the things that I wanted to accomplish. I get things done. I get the majority of the support from my colleagues. And uh, that's what it's all about. In order for you to be effective, it's not to fight. It's to know how to fight. And you have council members here that talk, 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 but could not get anything done. Thank you very much for the opportunity, for those who work with me during the year. And those that did, and I hope you guys could work with me in the future. Uh, thank you very much. My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. You're welcome, Mr. President. The vote, the vote is eight in favor, one absent. The regular meeting of June 22nd, 2021 is hereby closed. Good night, everyone. Thank you very much.